not contain R, okay? So you do have to install R. You can run R, the, the compiler that will run the code and everything else and then to, or interpret the code rather. Um, you can, um, but it's not very friendly. Um, um, it contains a console where you can type stuff or you can source uh, your scripts so it'll run them. But uh, it's much nicer to run things within, within R Studio, and it's R Studio we're going to be using today. Uh, but but again, if later on, and this has happened, uh, you install R Studio and you expect things to run, R Studio will complain that it can't find R. So you, these are two completely separate installs. Um, in general, what you use R Studio for is to develop um, scripts. Um, and these scripts you can run from uh, within the Arc um, console. You can run it within R Studio. I think R comes with something called R Script that you can run the scripts out with R Studio or, or starting R. Uh, we're not going to really be covering that. But if at some point you develop uh, an R package on your laptop and you want to move into a much bigger machine, uh, which has R, uh, you can run it using R script, so you don't have to run R Studio remotely from the other system. Um, so it's really handy. So, so what, the the good thing about uh, using um, R is that one, it's free. It's got a very large community which contribute to uh, to it and to which help out. Uh, it's got a huge number of packages. Um, and packages are extended functionality that then you can use in your own code. Uh, as on the, the 6th or the 10th, they had 16,387 packages that you can actually use. Uh, compared to the solutions that you saw yesterday, um, Excel spreadsheets or spreadsheets in general, and um, uh, OpenRefine is, is, is a lot more versatile and that you got a lot more control, but you're gonna to have to do a lot more work to get that, okay? So so it gives you a, a, a lot of rope. Um, you can do lots of things, including hanging yourself with it. Um, the, the great thing about R as well is, is you, you can document your processes. So by, by writing code, you're actually specifying what you're gonna be doing with the data, how are you going to process that? So basically, you're leaving a good provenance trail or an audit trail um, that you can actually use to um, go back and see what did I do with the data exactly. I'll emphasize what Peter said yesterday as well: is never ever modify your master uh, piece of data. If you're ever um, going to be writing out the data, making modifications do it to a separate data file. Do not modify your original data. You may, 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 be, you may be making assumptions that are, are later shown to be incorrect. And if that's your only source of data, uh, you may have, um, um, yeah, we may have lost it. You may not be able to retrace your way back to that data itself. Another great thing about R is, uh, is, is uh, you can scale your code up. So you can run things on your laptop and then if, if that proves to be insufficiently powerful enough, you can go to more powerful machines uh, within your own department, within your own uh, national, um, with your regional centers, as usual, you get a bigger computers. And if, if that's not sufficiently enough, then there are national centers as well. So the place where I work for at the moment runs the National Supercomputing Center uh, for the UK. So potentially you could be doing stuff there. And, and the, the, the hopefully what we'll get to later on today, it produces great graphics. Um, and so so as there is a, um, a package called ggplot, which is absolutely brilliant at producing graphics and it gives you a lot of control. And you can use that in publications or even just to understand what your data contains. But so for doing data exploration, or for providing presentations, graphics for your presentations. Of course, it's not all good. Um, the bad is it's a, it's a, it's a steeper learning curve. So you're gonna to have to spend a little bit more time learning uh, R. And, but again, I emphasize, you, you, do, you don't need to know all of R to be able to be productive with R. You, you, can, you can 
have a, a couple of commands that you can use and you continue to use and then gradually uh, build on your knowledge of it. And it will take you longer to get to your goal because you're not going to have to do it yourself. Okay, so so there's a lot of good, but but it is it's going to be it makes your life a little bit harder at the beginning. So by the end of the course, um, you should uh, know some of the basics of R. Uh, you will not be an R programmer. I think that'll take a little, little bit more time. But as long as as long as you lose the fear, uh, that that's going to be a major objective. Um, You'll be familiar with R Studio, which is uh, the uh, development environment we're going to be using. R, R Studio, I think, is a is a fantastic um, integrated development environment, as I say, which allows you to develop your code and do various other things at the same time. So it's a, it's a all all in one platform for you to develop your R code. You can run it. Um, 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 you can see what the outputs are. You can run it piecemeal. If any of you are familiar with um, Jupyter Notebooks, or, or uh, then it's similar. I think it's better than Jupyter Notebooks, but that's my own opinion. You should be able to read and manipulate data a little bit. Again, um, it'll take a little bit more time to, 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 to get out there with it. Um, also, I mean, one of the things that R is really good at is, is statistics. So if you're going to do some statistics on your data, I think R, uh, R is fantastic for that. I mean, the, the, the alternative is Python. I think Python gives you more a, a more slightly wider field of play for, for your code, but but, uh, um, but I think R is good for statistics and for graphics. I think it's for the graphics. I think the, the graphics produced by R, I think are better than ones that are produced by Python. But then that's again, my opinion. So you, you should be able to produce great graphs. Um, and as you see the, the, the graphic on, on the right there is, um, is, a, is a play on the O'Reilly books. That's what it is. Uh, but but the, the best way to learn uh, is just to play with it, you know, change stuff and see what happens. That is the way that you're gonna learn that. Uh, there is gonna be a lot of detail in this course you don't have to understand all of it. Just try to understand the overall arc of the thing and later on to worry about the details. Uh, if you get stuck, don't suffer in silence. If you don't understand that, I meet yourself and ask, I don't understand what you're doing. You're going too fast. Say that again. Please feel, feel free to interact and just, and yeah, don't worry about it. No question is stupid here, okay? Um, um, I think, yeah, that's it. That's for later. So to get started, um, I'm going to start R Studio. Uh, and when you start R Studio, you should get something like this. Uh, and I should make the fonts bigger, otherwise you're not going to see. Now, is that big enough for people? Or do, does anybody want a bigger? People are happy with that? People can yeah, see it? good for me. Okay, so if anybody's unhappy at any point, please just shout again. I keep it at this size. If I make it too large, um, uh, it can be a problem for me later on. Um, so let me just... Okay, so so we generally, when, when you start up, R, I think this is what you get. You have a console, um, which is where you can type R commands. Okay, this is not the way we're going to be using it today. Uh, you have an environment um, which will show you if you declare any objects or variables in R, they'll come up here so you can have a look and inspect them. Again, we'll have a look at that. Whenever you type an R command, it'll come up in your history. Yours is probably blank. Mine has got stuff that I've typed before. You can, you can, you can hit, hit on one of these things um, and then you can say two consoles. So, so you can go back in your history and reinstate a command and, and type it back in, in the, into the, 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 the console in this instance. It's also got two source. I'll show you what that is in a minute. So if you type r.version, 
it'll, it'll show you what version of R you have and tell you about the platform you're, you're running on. So here it's telling you I'm running on a Mac, uh, which is con containing an Intel um, architecture, the operating system you're using. Um, again, this is marrying some of the stuff above. This is the version of R I'm using. So this is R version four. It's 4.02 when it was released, it was 2020, the 22nd of June. SV and revision, that's to do with the revision control. The language is clearly R and then the version string, which marries all of these things together. And all of these R versions have a nickname and this, in this case is taking off again. Okay, so if you typed R version on your console, you should actually see something that corresponds to your operating system, you, the type of machine you're running in, and by hopefully the R version, uh, uh, sh it should be four if you've installed R version uh, recently. If, you, if you've got three, then that's, uh, maybe it's time for you to upgrade. Uh, once you've typed R version here, you should actually see it also appearing in your history. Um, um, so so you, you, you develop um, a history of things. Other things we have here, our connections, if you're making connections to, ex to databases and other things, external to your system and uh, tutorials, if you want to run a tutorial, I've never used that actually, that's relatively new. Okay, so I'm going to keep it in the environment there. Um, at the bottom right pane, you have files and you have a file browser. So you can see where you are in terms of where R thinks you are. We'll come back to that. If you have the, you have the next tab, plot. If you generate any plot, um, it will be appearing here. You can export it. You can save it to um, um, to, to an external file. So that's one way of doing it from R from sorry from R Studio itself. You have a, a zoom window. It's, it's grayed out because I don't have a graphic at the moment. What that will do is if if it will bring out a pop-out uh, of your, your graphic and you can actually look at it in more detail. Uh, the packages gives you a list of all the packages that you've got installed and, um, and whether you, you can update them from here. You have a help window, uh, which will give information on specific uh, things. And again, you have a pop-up, uh, which is this, this, this little show me in window. So if you click on that, it will appear in a much bigger window, which is easier to read than on itself. If you click on the on the red button or the or the red cross or the cross you have, then that will uh, bring it down. You've also got these backwards and forwards arrows, so you can go back and 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 do things you've looked at in the past. If you want to search on something, uh, so see so we just typed r dot. You can say r dot. Oops, sorry, r dot version. Okay that one there, you'll get the help for adult version and the different alternatives you can actually use. So you can search for stuff as well. And then a, a viewer, I'm not sure what the viewer does, I, I can't recollect. Uh, we'll come back to that. Nah, I, I, we're not going to use it. Okay. So what else? And for this course, they recommend switching off um, your um, saving your workspace. I never do that. So, so but it, let's, let's just cover it anyway. Incidentally, um, the, the stuff I'm going to be covering at the moment, today rather, follows the, the tutorial notes very closely. So if you want to, if, you, if you're unclear about anything I've said, if you go to the... Um, Oh, where is it now? The, the, the course pages, uh, can I find it? Give me a second, I'm just going to find, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, the here. workshop website you want yeah. with link to the materials. Yep. Let me just get. You're going to put it on the chat. That, yeah, I'll put it on the chat. Have um, you, will you be able to access the chat from while sharing your screen? Maybe a bit Yes, I can tricky. see it. No, okay, here we go. Oh, thank you. I can click on it. Okay. So as you saw, Peter yesterday walked through through the notes for the um, 
for the um, uh, spreadsheets and for the um, for the over uh, uh, over the fine. Um, similarly, here, if you actually oh hello, nothing here. No, okay, so I'm looking at I don't know what that's linked to. If you go down to I'm, I'm sure what are you looking for the link to the training yeah, yeah that should be it in day yeah. two yeah but it's not there so oh maybe it's working first thing this morning. I was say, I don't, I oh, it was working for me as well maybe it's just uh yeah i'm just trying it again and it's failed on me but i initially loaded it up what half an hour ago yeah I think it might be something with GitHub because materials are hosted on GitHub or something. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, fine. Um, uh, let me um, let me go back. So if 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 that were working, something happens. Something just happened to my browser. I think it's uh, okay. So anyway. We think it's something with GitHub at the moment. It'll uh, come back. It'll come back. Yeah, but but the the the, the notes I'm what I'm trying to say is the notes I'm following today follow the um, the course notes very closely. So so if there's anything you don't understand, if you go back, you should be able to to read about what I've said in more depth than what I'm probably going to be covering. Uh, but what I was going to say, they, they recommend that you do this. I I I would not do this, but well, let's just cover it anyway. If you go to tools on your R studio, right? And then if you go down to the bottom to global options, you'll get a pop-up. And then in general, um, they, they, they recommend never to save your, um, um, hold on a second. Uh, where am I? Option save, save on workspace. Where is save on workspace? Halfway through, halfway down. Oh uh, yeah, okay. So, so um, say well, watch that one there. Uh, they say they say never. Uh, I just I would just leave it as ask. So what that's doing, it'll save all your data that you're looking at um, into a local file um, within your your within your workspace directory. And again, we'll see what that is in a second. Um, um, I would leave as this, but if you, if you want to, if you follow their recommendations, they say never receive it. They, they, their justification is that if you have any problems uh, with the data or you have any any problems with the scripts, it'll, it'll bring them up again. So the, the, the bug will persist. I, 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 I don't subscribe that to that, anyway, but you, 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 it's up to you. You don't have to save your workspace. Also, if you're looking at very large data files, it may save a local copy of those very large data files. But at some level, that means that you don't have to read them again because they'll, they'll be in there in your memory. Uh, not in your memory, and you, it'll load them up from your desk. Um, but, but I've covered that. Um, the other thing I could do here at the moment is that I'm going to start up, if you go to File, Oh no, actually don't do this. Well, no, let's do this. Yes, let's do this. So we're going to say new new file, uh, R script. Oops, sorry. But the thing is, R script. So generally what you which you, you'll get is, is this layout where you have your script at the top of the pane. You have your console at the bottom. Uh, and then the problem with this setup, so if you let me know whether it's difficult to view stuff uh, later on, um, please let me know. I can change, you can change the order of the panels so that I can have my console on the right. So if you think you can't see things properly, uh, please shout and I'll, and I'll change that. I'll leave it as says for now. Okay. The other thing we're going to do is um, we're going to create a project. So, so projects like uh, our studio projects are good because they can contextualize the information that you're working on. So, so if you've got several projects that are going on at the same time, you're working on different sets of files. 
when you can quickly change from one context to another. So we're going to create an R Studio project. Um, the way that we go, we go to File. Okay, uh, go down to oh, I can't find it now. New Project, which is the second option at the bottom, from at the top rather. So New Project. If you click on New Project, we're going to create a new directory. And we're going to create a, a new project. So an R package is if you're developing one of these things, you'd, uh, you'd be um, getting other people to load up. Um, we're not going to be doing that. And a shiny web application gives you interactive um, graphics that you can actually put on, on, on online. And, and you can actually play with widgets that will zoom into your data and everything else. Again, we're not going to cover that. That's something exciting. You can go into it later on. So we're going to say new project. And we're going to create a new directory. So it's saying that they are going to call this, oh, I forgot what we're going to call it, uh, data cap, uh, yeah, let's just call it cap, uh, data. Yeah, let's call it data carpentry. Data dash carpentry. If I can spell tree, okay. Uh, it's going to be a subdirectory of tilde. Tilde is your home directory, so we're going to leave that as that. Um, I get this would be cool if you know how to use revision control uh, get. For now, we're just going to leave it as this. But later on, if you're familiar with get, it's worth um, taking that that box there. So we're going to create this project. Oh, so Sorry, yep. Mario, to, yep. to interrupt. Um, yep. In my screen, I cannot see that tilde sign and I don't have create um, a git respiratory. You create a, 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 sorry, create a repository? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't worry about that. I mean, there are ways of doing this out with our studio, but um, if you don't have the tilde there, you can put it explicitly in front. So you can say tilde dash and even if you're on a on a windows machine i think the, the forward slash is fine okay yeah so, so try that i'll, I'll leave I'll, I'll try that as well actually so if you, if you type create project okay um oh i may have done something stupid but never mind i may have created a tilde uh, i'll yeah. that in, in, my, in my case, uh, when I create project, it says you must specify a name for the new project directory. Yeah, that's the data. Did you put tilde slash forward yeah. slash carpent data carpentry? Do you call it data yeah. carpentry? Yeah. You needed the slash as well. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Yeah, mine's the same. And I did the slash. Uh, forward slash. Maybe, maybe remove the tilde and it'll create in your home directory. So I just pressed the browse button next to it and went to the file that I've got where all these files are saved. Um, okay. The folder I've created on my computer and that's worked for me now. So I can see some of the things to you have, but the, the box where the tilde was, was grayed out. So I couldn't actually type anything into that. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So maybe use browse and create, create it somewhere. I mean, the, 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 the location of the directories at the moment doesn't really matter. Um, um, as long as you end up with something like um, it, it takes you to a file, you can see a data capital dot R prize. Um, so I, I can I can I mean I can show you what happens. So I, I've been working on previous projects. So um, I've got recent projects here. I have uh, okay. Let, let's go to there's another project called Siesta here. Oh, sorry, because it doesn't exist in this machine. I've got another project called, okay, let's go to MISC. So it's going to MISC, okay. So I've got some R code here. I've got some directories. I can go back to my other project. Um, open, what's that project? Open recent projects, data carpentry. I don't save. 
And while this is loading, doesn't matter whether I, I create a folder on a external hard drive or like in, in the computer itself or it, desktop. It shouldn't matter. So you can use your external hard drive if, if you want. Um, so so I've gone back to the 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 the, the, the project just created. So you can see by changing projects quickly, it, it remembers the context. So I've got the data carpentry dot project. I've got an R history now, which wasn't there before, uh, but it's, it's zero bytes, so it's got nothing in it at the moment. Okay. So we're going to create some some. Um, we're going to create some some directories. Um, um, so on the on the on the files pane, if you click on new folder, right, and then it should come up with a pop up specifying for the, the, the name. So we're going to create uh, data. Try and keep it the, so R is case sensitive, regardless of whether you're on a on a Windows machine, which is not case sensitive. So try and keep the key, the, the, the same casing. So this is data raw. So this is where you're going to be storing your, your raw data, the data that you're bringing into your machine and you're not going to modify, okay? So this is the, the, your golden copies of the data. So if you press on OK, right, you should actually see a directory appearing on the, on the, on the, the, fo the folder. And let's, let's create, we're going to create two more. So we're going to create a data folder That, that's for um, the, the, your derived data. So that's just for some stuff that you created from your raw data. And we're going to create one final uh, folder, which is going to be a uh, figs for your figures. Okay. So for the next bit, I'm going to cheat. Um, hopefully this will work. It's not a big deal if it doesn't, but uh, I'm going to put something on the chat and I'm going to put something on the ether pad, uh, which are, because it's slightly longer to type. Uh, I'll just get you to copy. Oh, I know as a code. I'm going to have to reload the pad. So I'm going to paste a command on the chat just now. So some of you don't have access to the chat and the Etherpad because you've got it on a different machine. So I put in a command and I'm going to put it in the Etherpad as well. So at the bottom of the Etherpad, I haven't put it yet. At line 206. So I'm now going to paste it in my own system now. So that's going to, um, oh, that's fantastic. So I think there is a problem with, um, there is a problem with, um, With GitHub. Yeah. And we don't have the. No, it doesn't matter. I mean, we. we, we well, as it is. Uh, actually, I wonder if it. No, the data comes from Fed here, I think. So I think we're going to be okay. Um, okay. So what, the, what the, that, that handout does is it, it has um, commands. So it's got comments and it's got some of the codes. So you, you have to type a little bit less. So we're just going to have to type a little bit more. Um, um, I'll, I'll try and save you some of the typing uh, by, by pasting in bits and pieces in it. Um, but clearly there's a, there's a problem. Um, 404 not found because this, this worked for me a couple of days back. Okay, so let's start with uh, we, the way we're going to be doing things. If you start again on new file, um, create an R script. Okay, so you're going to have um, this 
at the top. So we're going to be typing things as part of a, uh, of a script. A script is something that normally you could take and you could run on, on the whole um, without having to, um, it, it would do the whole, um, what do you call it? it? It would execute a set of commands in conjunction. It's like a recipe. So I, the, the, you give it each of the individual steps to make your, 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 your pie or whatever. <laughs> All you do is you provide the file at the beginning, you put it into your script and you get your pie at the end. Um, and so you give it all the different steps, you know, mix the, uh, get your flowers, serve it, uh, add some eggs, add some milk, roll it or whatever. So, so all of these equivalents are done in your R script. Okay, so, so the first thing that you, you, you can put uh, there is a, a hash. A hash is, um, is a is a comment in, in, in R, okay? So anything that on the same line that follows the hash is ignored. You can put a hash at the beginning of a line, or you can put it at some later point uh, as part of the command. So it's always useful to put hashes um, to, to document your processes. I can assure you, you 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 may be uh, you may remember what you're doing now, but later on, um, if you come back in six months, you may not have a clue. Uh, it, or you may be handing on the code to somebody else and may give to, may produce a, a 1,000 line script and say, pass it over to Alex without any documentation. Yeah, Alex, this will do what you want. And she she would, may not necessarily be very pleased, although it may do what she wants once. If she wants to make a small change, uh, it it'll, may seem a little bit cryptic. Um, so not a great thing. So, so before we continue, Mario, just a quick, uh, quick comment. So Peter actually had the file downloaded before before the website went down. Uh -huh. Shall I email this to everyone? Would that help? Or do you want to download it from Figshare? Uh, uh, it's not Figshare. I, I mean, is it not Figshare? Well, the, the data, I think, is Figshare. But the, yeah, I may mean, mail it to everyone. So, so, everyone so that's the, the file called uh, code handout. handout. Is yeah. that the one? Yeah. OK, so I'm just going to email to everyone. Um, email it to me as well. It you is, as well, of course, yeah. yes. So I, I'll I just... had it, but I deleted the directory. Anyway, so so uh, if you put file, save as, uh, blah, 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 file, save as. Okay, so and if you give it a name, you can call it whatever, my R code, my R, which is not a great name, but it'll do for now, my R code. Uh, it will save into the data carpentry directory. Okay, so so later on when um, Alex gives out the, when you get the, the email, when you get the email from Alex, let me know. And I'll have a look at my email as well. Anyway, so you can put a comment um, and you can say um, um, script from data carpentry a lesson. Okay, so you can give it a title. Incidentally, something else that's kind of cool that the notes can give you, if you, if you, if you go to, um, I think it's notes code, right, insert section, um, if you click on that and it'll come up with a, I think, um, so we're currently doing, what are we doing? We're doing um, creating objects in R, let's say, creating objects in R, right? It'll create something like this. You can do this by, by hand as well. You can put a hash uh, with some text, and if you, you just need four lines, um, and then if you if you look at your R Studio um, window, there's a little set of lines there. Um, if you click on that, there's a table of contents. So if you create these code sections, you can create these um, sections. So you can, if you click on them, you'll be able to go to them. I mean, at the moment, you can't do anything uh, because there's only one. And if you click on it again, it'll go away. But, but 
putting um, um, these code sections. It's kind of cool for to navigate your code in. Okay, so where are we? So I think people are starting to get the the file. I think so. Shall I check my my mail? But but I'm where's my mail? That's my mail. Have I got an email from Alex? Yes, I've got an email from Alex. Okay. So maybe so, rename everyone if you can rename the file to code handout dot r. Well, no, you don't. Might make it easier. No, but because the, there is the 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 braces uh, and one in the file name. Eh? So I don't know what just to make uh, it consistent with. Well, I mean, well, what you can do is you can take out the file that um, Alex sent. If you grab that, and if you I can can I drop it into it? If you just you can just drop it into the directory. Or if you move it there. Oh, maybe, okay, maybe you can't. Okay. Um, if, you, if you can drop it into the same directory. So at the moment, I know that's in. So if I start my finder. And if I go to. Again, I'll be similar to you. Uh, oh, yeah, I created a tilde directory. So putting a tilde was a mistake. And if I drop it in there, okay, let me just rename it and move the, the one. If you double click on that, no, sorry, within our studio. You should get um, Not key. as you can see, you got two tabs. Um, you got. I don't have. No. You don't have that. You don't have this file. Or you don't have an email from Alex. What, what don't you have? Somebody said something. I said okay. As everybody, let's let's do the the, the nonverbal indicators. I, I'll clear it just now. Oh, can I clear it? Yes. Who's got Who's got this file, and who can open it, and who hasn't? Okay, Manuel hasn't got it. So, Manuel, do you don't have it because you don't have the email, or because you can't drop it into your? I can't uh, drop it. Okay. Can you save it from your email? And then move it to the. Okay. So I try try that. So we've got a whole bunch of people that um, are not responding as yet. Uh, Alexandra Jackson, do you have it, Heather? Oh, I have it off my email, but I I can't drag it and I can't open it. Can you save it? From it's saved email? on, yeah, it's saved onto my desktop. Um, and then from user finder or, or I can't, explorer right. to move it onto the... Right, onto the console. Mm, so no, move it to the directory. To, so to the directory. To your data company's directory. Right, okay, I'm having difficulty um, setting setting that up. Um, so where, where does the difficulty lie? I mean, so, 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 um, so you've saved it, right? So, and you can see it on your desktop. I can see it, it's on my desktop, yeah. Okay, can, can you start an Explorer? Are you on Windows or a Mac? I'm on Win no, no, I'm on Windows. Okay, so start an Explorer up. Uh, within the Explorer, Go to the data carpentry directory. And then once you're there, if you can find that, can you find that? Right, no. Um, there's my data carpentry. I think that's the directory, but that's just on. All right. Well, no, I don't think that's done it. Um, so you, you tried and dropped it there? Or from I've 20? dragged and dropped it there, yeah. 
Uh, why do you think has done it? Because I'm not very sure where I've been. That so I've created you... and to the correct place. Um, I, yeah, I, I created a directory on our studio and then it disappeared. And, and then I got a little bit lost in terms of trying to find it again. Um, you know, I think if you carry on with everyone else, I will try and sort myself out here because I don't want you to hold up everybody else just for me. So um, I, I think you should be able to do most of this without, I mean, not having the notes and not having yeah. the file is a bit of a problem. Um, I'll follow what's going on so on, on your screen. So um, that might be the easiest, I think. Because I'm going to pretty much, I feel like I've just got to, I've got bits and pieces that, that's been set up. So that probably means start from the beginning. So if I follow what you're doing, then um, that, that'll be easiest, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Manuel. We also have Susanna who is, who, um, is having uh, problems. Well, Manuel sorted. What's your problem, Susanna? Have you unmuted yourself, Susanna? Uh, so Susanna is saying in the chat, she got an error in connecting with R. Connecting with R? Yeah. Um, oh. The problem, I think, is you can't drag the file directly into R Studio. Yeah. You have to drag it into the, the yeah, folder, folder where your project yep. is. So yeah, I got... Yes, that's what I did exactly, and then I got the error. You got the error of once you dragged that into the folder. Okay, I'll try to do that again. I just need to restart everything. Um, I'm going to make Susanna a co-host so she can share her screen and the same with Heather as well, so we can help um, both so, of them. Okay, well, while we're waiting, Vanessa, are you sorted? And Kirsty is also... Uh... Kirsty is observing. Oh, Kirsty is observing. Okay, our, our Kirsty. Our Kirsty, fine. Sorry, Kirsty. I don't register. And Vanessa? Okay, Vanessa's very quiet. Okay, so, so, shall we, shall we do Susanna's problem? Okay, yes. So I'm going to open R again, if that's okay. Yeah, our studio. studio. It's our studio. Yeah. yeah. So, so shall I stop sharing so she can do it, or shall I? Yeah, maybe maybe that might be the easiest and quickest way. Okay. So, so if you bear with us while we try and sort out. So this is a learning experience for all of us as well because um, Susanna's having problems. Um, maybe. So would you like to share your screen? Thank um, you. Share screen. Yes. So I'm going to share the our studio. Where is it? Yeah. Okay, so I just open it again. I'm not sure if I lost all the files I've created. Well, go, go to file, open, file, file mm -hmm. and then open project. Open projects. Okay. Oh, recent, recent, recent projects, recent projects. Just below. Oh. Uh, sorry. sorry. Cancel. Yes, cancel. cancel. Uh, bottom, uh, bottom right. Yep. Recent projects. Recent projects. Yep. Do you see that, it there? Okay, it's here. It, yep. So that, that's why it's great to have um, a project because you can easily navigate to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So it come back to what I had. I think yes. Okay. So you got your R code. Okay, yeah. But but but, you, but but what you're missing is uh, the handout. So did you save the handout that? Um, I have it on a, a temporary file, so I need to copy it. Yeah, but, but, but don't copy it into our studio, copy it into that directory. Which, okay. uh, so, I think uh, that was the, the problem. Yeah, it's telling you what the directory is. Work from home, workshop data carpentry one. Incidentally, it's sometimes not a, great, not a great idea to have embedded spaces in, in, in directories because they can give you problems. Um, just be aware of that. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to find it. <laughs> I think I just, okay, I will open where it is again. Okay, it's here, copy. Yep, and then copy to that directory. Uh, 
And now I need to find the directory. I cannot remember where. Work from home. So you've got something called work from home somewhere. Uh, and then okay, I know I found it. So it's the data carpentry directory. Yeah, if you put it okay, in there. Okay, I found it, yes. So I just paste it there. Yeah. Okay, and perfect. Yes. So it's there now. Can you see it? But I can't see it in there. Oh, yeah, there double click on that. Should I click on it? Yeah, yeah, double click on it. Okay, it's there. Yeah, okay, so, so you can see that. Okay, so Thank if you. You, yeah, that's fine. So if I, if I go back to share my screen. Can we do the same for Heather as well? Um, oh yeah, no problem. So do you want to stop sharing? Uh, yes, let me just. No, Heather, Heather had, a, had two screens, didn't she? So she may not be able to. Heather, can you share? Oh, that's true. Yeah, no, I can't share screens, unfortunately, because I'm working off my iPad and uh, yeah. laptop, unfortunately. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so, no. Can we, is it the same issue that Susanna no. had? You no. had, you, you no. couldn't move the for a file. That, into that was the one of them. That, that was one of them. But I had other issues where before I was, I was, uh, I had lost um, a, a sub, the, the directory that I created and then, um, yeah, so basically I'm going to have to go back to that whole process and start from the beginning during a break and, and recreate everything because it's going to be a mission to try and, and find where everything is saved and, and, and that will keep everybody well, else back. So well, I'm, I'm we, quite we happy can, to... We'll start that during the break. Okay? I think so. so I yeah, agree, so. yeah. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll give you the commands, whatever commands I type. Um, um, yeah, thank you. Um, later on, I mean, that'd it, be great. It, Thank you all, so much. It's, it's all going to be in a file anyway, so yeah. So I'm back to sharing my screen. I think. Um, so, so you you'll see now you've got two tiles. You've got the old one. And incidentally, whenever you see something in red, it means it's not been saved. So if you just to finish that off, if you type Control S or Command S if you're on a Mac, um, you can save that file, and it, the red bit goes away. And then if you go back to Code Handout. So again, what you see here is um, you've got exactly the this, this, this same kind of layout. Um, you've got, um, they're using three dash, um, three, uh, what do you call it? Uh, hashes for, um, for a comment. Again, it's a bit overkill. Um, if you put um, three dashes at the bottom, but, is it three or is it four? Let's put four. And then if you click on, right, it appears as a, in your, in your um, table of contents as well. So you can do this manually just by putting it as either three or four, I can't quite remember what. Um, okay. Um, so sorry, can I just ask what does, uh, what's this create objective is again? Okay, well, okay, so creating ob ob objects. It's, a, it's yes. the name of um, the, 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 the lesson of, that we're doing just now. So, okay. so an object is, um, other, is also a variable, um, but variables or, or, or you know, your X and Y's that you can put data into and are called uh, objects. Oh, I see. It's just a no. heading, it's a heading in the file. When you use yeah. the, the, yeah. the, like the hash app. sign, it creates a heading of a certain level. So three hash, Signs is creating uh, a heading of level three. Is that right, Mario? Well, it's, uh, 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 it would, uh, if it's marked down, it would, but it's not marked down. So uh, um, uh, uh, again, you can have something called R marked down, which is really neat as well, but we don't cover in this lesson. Okay. Um, so sorry um, for confusing this. No, it's fine. I mean, but, but, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know why they're using three hashes. I mean, three hashes rather. Um, so the, there was a couple more things I should have covered um, in the thing. Uh, if you go to, I think it's on help, uh, and if you go to cheat, I can I can never pronounce that, cheat sheets. Uh, I, this is one of the things I have problems with. I'm not a native speaker, by the way. Uh, mm. uh, I'm, I'm a, a native Spanish speaker. This is why I have problems with that. Really? Cheat sounds. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, if you if you you see, there's a number of uh, those sheets. Uh, 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 and if you actually click on them, so so if I click on our studio, I'll take you to your browser. I'll, I'll bring my browser across, and I'll, um, and I'll download uh, a, 
uh, PDF. Okay, which covers the, the whole browser um, in detail. Okay, so 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 that the, it'll tell you more than I've told you. Um, it, it tells you what each bit is, and there's a whole bunch of um, commands you can actually use to to shortcut uh, stuff that you don't have to point and click. So so um, one of the really useful ones I should tell you about is the control. Um, Commands so you can navigate between panes by using control. If you use control, oh, sorry, it's, it's maximized here. I don't want it to do that. So if you do control one, right, it, it goes into the, the your source pane. If you type control two, it goes to your console, and then it gets a bit. It goes all over the place. Control three, I think, goes to your help. Uh, control four goes to what is that? I can't see. Oh, the history. No, it's not. Yes, it is a history. What is that? It is a history. Sorry. Okay. And it says a control five, control six, and they'll take you to different places. But there's a whole bunch of other sheets that you can actually use. Um, so you've got data transformations. You can deploy. We've using ggplot as um, the graphing. A package we're going to use in Power we don't use, but but that's for looking at some of the linear um, um, programming that you can actually. No, it's not linear programming. It's uh, what's it called? Um, it's to do with the uh, linear mapping. Oh no, what's it called? I anyway, I forgot what it's called. Linear something. Anyway, uh, it allows you to 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 move between the the, the tidyverse view of things and the old versions of R. Package development, we're not going to be doing that. If you want to see how to do Shiny, then that, that would be good. Uh, inter interfacing with Spark, and that's for, um, what's it called, um, streaming stuff. Uh, the R Markdown is worth knowing about, and then an R Markdown reference sheet as well. And if you go to the, the brush, there's a lot more if you go to the, um, to the website. So that's, that's worth knowing about. Um, something else I should have said is if you if you want help, so I showed you how to do it in here. So you, if you type r dot version, um, right, you can you can get your help that way. But you can also type question mark. Um, Where are you? There, oh, on on your console, and the, the, again, oh, let's type something else. Um, ls so it appears different okay so it will appear on the on the help panel as well if you if, if, you, if, I, if, I, if you mention something you can't quite remember what it is you can do a, a double question mark um, and that will search on all the packages that you have installed so ggplot um, um, so it it does a it does a search and it gives you all the things it finds in ggplot and you can actually click on one of these things and it'll take you to the to the, the help files. So the, those are two useful ways. Uh, in general, the, the most useful way if you come across an error message or you want to find out how to do something in our studio or in our Google, I think is, is possibly the, the the best solution and that's what I tend to use if I ever run into a problem. Um, yeah, and there's, there's, um, there's more information in the tutorial notes on how to obtain help if you run into problems, um, which I, I, I won't cover just now. Okay, so let's go back to the creating our studio, create our objects. So let's start by you, by you. I'm gonna be typing on the source pane and I'll show you how to execute those commands. So, um, so let's type three plus five, okay? You can run that piece of code um, by typing either command enter, uh, if you're on a Windows machine, sorry, control enter. And if you're on a, on a Mac, it's command enter. And what that, that will execute that thing. It executes it by copying it into your console. So if you look down onto your console, I'll make it a little bit bigger. 
a little bit wider. Okay, you see that three plus five has now been put in your console and it comes out with the answer of eight. The, the one gives you uh, an indication of uh, the, what data uh, you're in. So here it's eight uh, because it's the first element. If you had a lot more elements, uh, it would give you the first element of the, so you give them the number of the element of the next line. Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm struggling to do that. Did you just, you literally just type three plus five uh, yeah, and then you type, uh, what, you're on a, a Windows machine, yes? Yeah, a Windows machine, yeah. Uh, yeah, type a control enter at the end of that line. Ah, there we go, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you can execute it. The other way you can execute it uh, is by running it from, I think that one does one line, okay? So you can also do it on the interface. Um, it's handy just to do command uh, enter or control enter. Oh, okay, so that executes the next bit. <laughs> So it's going to the next thing, okay? So that's executing it. Um, if you have a whole script, I think that'll run the whole script. And, and so you can actually do simple ma mathematical calculations like three plus five, yeah, fantastic. Uh, an overblown calculator. You can also do division, 12 divided by seven. And again, command enter will execute that. And you have a 1.714, whatever. Yeah. What's more useful now is you can assign what is called an object. You can create a variable name or, or an object name and always try and make, make, have names that are meaningful. They must start with a, with, a, with a letter. They cannot start with a number. So you can have weight uh, and we say you're going to have the weight in kilograms. Now, the, the assignment in R is a little bit novel. Um, it's, a, it's a less than sign followed by a, a, a minus, right? Um, and um, if you type 55, and then if you type control or command enter, right, it will execute that. Now, if you click on your environment tab on the top right, right, you'll actually see that you have an object, weight underscore kilograms, which has been assigned a value of 55. Okay. Now, this is what is the assignment operator in R. You can actually use the equal sign, uh, uh, but it, it, it runs into a number of problems in a, in a couple of edge cases. I think anybody that's doing R tends to actually um, use this symbol. Um, so, so I would stick with it. Uh, the reason why I think they, they chose this symbol is when originally they were developing R, and I think it was in the late 90s or early 90s, um, um, the, the equal sign was already taken up um, for a logical comparison, okay? Uh, nowadays, the, the, the logical comparison is done using equals equals. Um, so, so the equal sign at the time uh, was just equal, sorry, the, the logical comparison was equal, so that was already taken up. So this is why they use uh, the, the symbol. You can actually use an, uh, uh, an equal sign. So you can say X, is equal to 10. Oh, sorry, command enter, no. Uh, uh, control enter, rather. Right, and you can see x is equal to 10 does actually work, but it may give you problems on some on occasions. So you're better using the arrow. Incidentally, R Studio does have a, a, a shortcut. If you type Alt or Opt, uh, Alt if you're on a Mac, Opt I think if you're on a Windows machine and a minus at the same time, it will automatically generate the less than sign uh, and the minus. So you, you, can, you can use that to not have to, uh, to, you only use one keystroke as opposed to using two in conjunction. There is something else you can actually use, uh, which people tend to use less often, but it's also valid. Uh, they use um, 10, 
and then point the arrow the other way to y. Okay, that will also work. So you're assigning the value of 10 to the, the object y. And if you type control enter or command enter, right, you actually see that you get the, the assignment there. I'm going to I'm going to minimize the the help window so that um, so using these um, up and down so that's maximized that and you and the middle one has both of them so I'm going to minimize it so you've got more you can see more of there. okay so I, when, the, the one thing is that you saw is that when you make these assignments the, the it doesn't return the value, right? If you want to know the value, okay, you can use either the, the environment tab over here, which does actually help, or you can just type the, the variable name or object name in the, in the, the, the and then type control enter or command enter, and you'll actually see that the, the value appears at the bottom here. Um, so we have um, the value of y is set to 10. Okay. When you're making the assignment, you can also do something uh, funky. You can put brackets around it. So let, let's do the, if you put one, but if you put the opening bracket, it'll, it'll automatically close it for you, which is great, but it can be annoying sometimes because um, when you're putting in a quote, you, um, if you want to delete the, 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 the other quote, you have to go to the end quote and delete that one. Um, you cannot just um, if you if you delete the, if you press delete, I'll delete both of them. So if you want to delete one of them, you have to go to the end and delete the the, the back end quote. Anyway, that was a digression. So if you put that and if you put the weight in kilograms again, and if you type uh, Alt uh, or Command minus you get the, the, the little assignment operator, and if you put 55, and if you type command enter again, you'll see it does two things. It does the assignment, but it also reports the value uh, to the console. So you're doing two things. You, do, you are um, assigning weight and underscore kilograms, and then you, it's also printing it out after it's assigned it. Uh, sometimes you want to do that because it can be useful to see what you're assigning, uh, because it, it can be a combination of other variables as well. Okay. So you, you can perform operations on these, these objects that you've created. So you can say 2.2 .2 times the weight in kilograms. You can tell this is American. Or oh, incidentally, when you're typing as well, it can help you say, oh, you already have an object called weight in kilograms. If you click on that, um, it will complete the thing for you. So you don't have to type all of it. So this is converting the weight in kilograms into pounds. So let's hence you multiplying it by 2.2. .2. So if you type a control enter, command enter, 2.2 .2 times weight in kilograms is 121 uh, pounds. Okay. Um, you can actually save that. So you can into another object. So you can say weight. I can't spell weight, weight and pounds, LBs, and then again, alt minus or opt minus, right? And it's going to be 2.2 .2 times the weight uh, underscore kilograms. And if you type con uh, command enter or con control enter, right? You can actually see that the weight in pounds is assigned two times point two times weight in kilograms. You can actually look at your environment and actually see there that's been assigned the, 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 the number uh, one two one. Okay. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to reassign weight in kilograms. I'm going to say it's a hundred now. So you can see that the weight in kilograms is changed to 100, but you'll also see that the weight in pounds is still 121, okay? So this, despite the fact that you've changed the value 
of the weight in kilograms, the weight in pounds has not changed. If you wanted to actually change that, you'd have to redo the, the assignment. So if you click on the on the, the line before, and if you just type control enter or command enter, you'll actually see that that's now actually changed the value um, to 220. So changing the, 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 um, the length of, sorry, not the length, the value of the original uh, variable that was used to create a, the assignment of another object. So I'm using variables and objects interchangeably. Um, does not change it. So the, 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 the derived variable, you have to do the operation again. Is that clear? So, so again, if you have any problems, if you don't quite understand what I've done, please do stop and, and say, whoa, I don't understand what you've done. So in general, so we've got these things called objects. You can, you can provide them with assignments. The assignments can be fairly simple. They can be numerical assignments. You can do much more complicated operations on them. And we'll, we'll see that these will become a little bit more complex later on. In general, try and have um, meaningful values. You don't want to have you don't want to have something that is too long because that means lots of typing for you. You don't want to have something too short. X and Y generally not great variables. You want something that's going to be semantically meaningful to the context of what you're doing. Right. So weighting kilograms is ideal in the sense that it's specifying that it's a, it's a weight. And you, it's going to be in kilograms and weight in pounds. It's, it's telling the, the person that's going to be reading your code what your intent was. Okay, um, so so um, so that's a good thing to have, right? Well, as I said to you earlier on, variable names cannot start with a number. So if you try and do two v as the start of a variable and try and assign something to that, it will return an error message. Okay. It does not like that. Um, v is fine. Two V is not fine. So you, you, you it doesn't want. Uh, you cannot start uh, at the name of an object or a variable with a number. You can start it with a dot. Uh, dots are special uh, in the sense that you um, you won't be able to see them. Um, so if you type, for instance, if you type ls with brackets around it, it will list all the objects that you've created. Um, if you type command enter or control enter, you see you've got four variables, weight, weight in pounds, X and Y. If you were to create a variable or an object that begins with a dot, so which you can actually do, so you can create a dot X, alt minus or alt minus, or do the arrow, you can assign that a value of 10. If you type Control enter, command enter. Right, you you, are, you see it does not appear into your global environment. If I type ls, it does not appear there. And I can't remember. He, he, uh, give me a second. Uh, ls. It's a way of showing it. I think it lists them all. Uh, Yeah, so, so if you do ls, you can say all dot names equal true. You can actually see that now you can see the dot x and you can see a dot random dot seed, which is used to generate random numbers. Uh, so generally, unless you're trying to hide something, not a good idea to put anything that begins with a dot. Um, and uh, there are other things that are reserved names. Um, uh, so, sorry, Mario, can I yep. ask a question, please? Yep. Um, about these brackets next to the numbers, I don't know whether you mentioned at the beginning, can you explain what they are? Like all of them, yes, most of the time they have bracket one in the console. And, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, in mine, sometimes I see bracket five. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'll cover that again. So this is, this is giving you an indication of um, how many data elements you have. Okay. And so this is one because the first element that follows that is, is number one. Okay, so if you count one, two, three, four, the next element is five. So the first element here, X, is five. 
six. If you had more, it, it, it starts off how many, it, it, with the number of the elements that you actually have using this. So here you've got only got, well, you've got three elements, but the first element in that line is number one. The first element on this line is number five. Does that make sense? Do you understand? Or is that still not clear? No, uh, okay. to be honest. Okay. Um, so, so you what you're what you're saying is, um, in terms of the number of element, makes sense. But then you have, for example, on uh, on the above line, mm -hmm. uh, you have bracket one. All mm -hmm. of them are like four elements. They're y with a bit of distance. And then when you show all of them, suddenly make some. Uh, I can see like there are some hidden elements appear. But is there any like number of characters are allowed in each line? Well, I mean, it, it, it's. It's not so much that. It's the fact that it's just telling you, so you have two lines, okay? So the first element in the first line is, is, is the first element in, the, in all of the set of elements that you have. In the second line, the first element that you have, okay, and that, that list is element number five. So, so let me show you another, um, let me show you another uh, R command. Uh, let me put it on the other tab. So you can generate a sequence of integers. We're going to cover this later. So let's do one to, let's do one to thirty. And if you type com command enter, yeah, okay, uh, it will list thirty elements. Okay, so here the first element is the element number one, and then you've got another twenty-one elements on that in that line. The first element of line. The second line is the 22nd element because it's 22nd, it's, it's 22. But if you're going to count it, if, if these were non consecutive numbers, uh, um, it's telling you that the first element that appears on the second line is the 22nd element in your series. Um, let's change that to 100. Okay. So it's telling you the first element on the first line is the first element. The first element in the second line is the 16th element. Uh, the, the third element, sorry, the first element on the third line is the 31st element. Do you understand now? Yes, yes. I, and I can see by zooming in and out of um, the, the software, it, uh, that number can change. So yeah, that, that yeah. makes sense. So it's just Thank giving you an indication of how many elements you've typed. Um, um, so you don't have to count. It'll give you an indication. So, so here, the last element is 91. Okay, so how many elements do you have? 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. Okay, you've got 100. Okay, it's clear now because I've done a sequence of 1 to 100. Uh, but if I um, if these were um, letters, A, B, C, D, then it'd be much harder to uh, to do that. Actually, there is, uh, but let, let's not do it. But it's just telling you the, what, 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 what the, the ranking is of the, the, first the first element that appears on that particular line. Um, Thank you. Okay, the, the, the other suggestion here um, is, is nouns for variable names. Um, so, so again, um, things you're gonna name, so it's the number of cats that you actually have. And if you're gonna create a function, we'll cover functions in a minute. If you're going to um, do something to the cat, you're going to groom it, you're going to pet it, you're going to feed it, then you name your, your functions after verbs or doing um, things. Be consistent with the naming of, of objects or variable names. Uh, if, you, if you're going to be using a camel case, as you saw yesterday, um, um, so something like, uh, um, so what, sorry, let me just, okay. So you, you've done weight in pounds and, and kilograms here. If you're going to use camel case, so you could use weight and kilograms. Okay, be consistent. So don't don't call the next one weight and pounds. Okay, try and adopt a consistent set of name conversions. So instead of having weight in pounds. Be, name it similarly. Um, so use weight and pounds. Okay. Um, it's, it's, so so try to be consistent in your naming scheme. Adopt a naming scheme. Uh, you, you, you're going to use um, um, 
underscores or, or dashes or, or, or camel case. Try and try and be consistent throughout your um, your naming scheme. Okay, so um, I, one other thing is you actually see that this is in red. Do save regularly, okay? So um, you can do either do it by file save. You can actually see that it's got a shortcut. In my case, it's command save, uh, and from Windows it'll be control save. So it'll be at a circumflex S. Um, so 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 do save often. So you can either use that, um, so that it doesn't appear in red. I mean, our studio could crash. Your machine could crash. Uh, the power could go off if you're on a desktop and you, your, um, you, your machine goes down um, and you could have lost um, a whole day of work. Um, so, so to save often, I mean, it's a bit same applies to any other uh, operation you're doing if you're using Microsoft Office or Word or Excel, try and save often. Uh, okay, so so enough of me speaking, let's do a, it's a challenge here. Okay, so I see these are all, um, this, this should not take you long. I mean, all you can do is just take out the, the commands, uh, the comments rather, um, and, um, and then just execute them. Okay, so, so, so what are the values for each of the uh, what are the values after each statement in the following? So you can actually look at the environment. You can you can put brackets around to see what you get, uh, um, and do it. And I'm gonna also get you to do one more. So as I'm calculate your BMI. And the BMI is given by, and I got this wrong last time, I can't believe it, is your, your weight uh, divided by your height squared. Okay. So I'll give you five minutes to do that. It's possibly too long. And I'll, I'll, I'll say, I got this idea from Peter because um, it's not, not from yesterday, but from he's done this before. It's nice to actually have a kind of timer to do this. So it's like a mastermind. Uh, okay, so you give me five minutes. If you have any questions, please ask now. Uh, otherwise, try this exercise uh, and have a go. Actually, I mean, this, this uh, takes us nicely into the break. Eh? So, so after this, we'll just go over the answers and then we'll do, uh, we'll take a, a 30 minute, well, 30 minutes sounds excessive now, but. And while we're having the break, Heather, can we can fix Heather's problem? So sorry, Heather. Mario. Yep. Sorry, can you explain again? What is H uh, multiplied H in the brackets? Okay, sorry. So that um, I, I'm, I'm asking people to calculate your own uh, BMI, which is body mass index. So if you take your weight in kilograms and your height in meters, uh, if you don't know what your weight is, uh, either guesstimate it or, uh, or make up a value. So uh, I just want you to calculate your body mass index. And I've given you the formula. The formula is W weight divided by your height squared. Ah, squared, okay.
I'm going to save. I'm putting out the time. Oh, no, it's not twice. Uh, Okay, so let me let me cover. Stop it. Let me, so let me let me just do this finally before you go and have a break. Um, so so clearly, um, let me see if I can do this again. You go to code and then comment and comment lines. Yeah, so you can, let me just show you this um, because it can be very useful. Um, if, you, if you highlight a bit of code, a segment of code, and then if you go to code, um, comment and comment lines. So sometimes this can be very useful to debug or, or pieces of code. You want to uncomment a, 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 better, a section of your code. If you go to those comment and comment lines, you see that you have um, a shortcut, which uh, I guess for Windows will be Control uh, Shift, um, Control C Shift, and 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 the Mac is Command C and with a shift at the same time, it will comment the lines, and if you run it again, it will uncomment lines. Um, the fact that they're using double comments, I had to do it twice. But, but um, just by typing in con command enter or control enter, um, you can actually see that mass is 47.5, which is 122. If you multiply mass by two, it's, um, I can do this in my head, 95. Yep, there you go, mass is going up to 95. So you've reassigned the value of mass with the old original value. You multiply it by two and you've given it that new value too much. So you've overwritten the old value. Uh, um, so you've reassigned it in a similar fashion. You're taking the old value of age, 122, you're subtracting 20, and then you're overwriting the old value of age. Okay. 
So, so you, you, you can um, use the old value to overwrite um, with a new value of the same, on the same object name. So that's, that's a useful thing to know. Okay, so age is now 102. So I'm finding that out by looking at the, the environment. I'm going to minimize the help again. Okay, and then the mass index, uh, mass divided by age. I've never heard of that. I don't know if that exists. It'd be 100, uh, it'd be 95 divided by 102, which is some ridiculously small number. So the other thing I, I actually ask you to calculate is your body mass index. Um, so here, here's mine, my weight, and I'm not going to lie, I think it was this morning, was 81.6, I think. And my height is uh, 1 meter and 72 centimeters. So I'm going to put I'm going to put it in brackets so it prints out at the same time. My body mass index BMI is equal to my weight oh sorry divided by and I need to put it in a bracket my height times my height and if I type Command enter. Um, oh, so I'm you, not saying. We've got a name error in the weight. Yeah, so yes, it should be weight kilogram, shouldn't it? And if I was, again, I'm being inconsistent here. I should have had height in meters, but uh, so I'm, 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 do as I say, not as I, not do as I preach and not as I say. 27.5 age, which I think makes me overweight, but not obese yet. Uh, so so let, let me briefly notes. recap, but I'm you can about go to go into a new section. So the most important things are you can create these things called objects and you can assign to them using this uh, less than minus sign. And you have a shortcut with an R studio, uh, which is the alt or the opt minus, which will, will make that easier for you. So, so we're going to go into to vectors and data types in, in R. Um, there are a whole bunch of different data types that are, are covered by R. Vectors are the most basic. Um, oh, hold on. Before we get to vectors, we've got to do functions. So, so, so let, let me just, so we, we, we can have um, a weight and kilograms. Well, okay, and you can use a function. If a function is a it's a piece of code that you or someone else has written up that you can call um, without having to type in all of the underlying code. So it goes away, executes something, and it returns a value. So for instance, you have a square root function. So the square root of 10, it's a funny name to pick. Uh, number rather. Um, so if you, if you click on that and then a command or control enter, just go to the that and I, um, um, you, you'll see that the weight in kilograms has now got a funny value of 3.166. Um, or you can just type weight. And you can see here, you, if you just, you don't have to type the whole name. And if I type the variable by itself, I return the value on the console. And it's, it's slightly truncated. So, so in the environment over here, it's, it's up to about 12, 15 decimal places. And over here, it's up it's to six decimal, one, two, three, four, six, I think. Um, so having too many decimal places can be annoying. Um, so, so they've got a round function. Um, if you do round without specifying how many, so if, if I you can see the, the tool tip there is saying that uh, there's uh, the value that you're going to specify, and then there's a digit which, which has a default value of um, zero. So that's giving you an indication of what's going to happen. So the weight in kilograms, ah. if you type that and you type command enter or control enter, you'll see that it's rounded off. And so it's truncated all the, no, that's wrong. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I can't spell. So I misspelled weight in kilograms over here. That's why it's, it's different. So, so let me just run, execute these things again. So the weight is 2.16662. And now when I try and round it, it's, it's rounded it to three because it's truncated all the decimal places, um, which you, you may or may not want. You can find out what arguments uh, the function is, is going to use by typing args. So this is a, a reminder for you if you've not seen it before. I mean, if you know the function already, but you can't quite remember what, what the arguments are. If you type args and then the name of the function name, and if you type command enter, control enter, uh, it's telling you it's a, it's a function, right, which takes two arguments. The first argument is a value, that's the x. And then you've got digits equal to, to zero. In effect, the same thing that the tooltip returned. You could also say, okay, that's not enough for me. I, uh, I can save. Um, I want to actually find out what the, the manual page is. If you type a, a question mark for a help, and then you get a description here. I'm going to do in the pop up so I can actually see it in more detail. Um, it's got a description, it's got some usage, it's a description of the arguments, a little bit more of the details, and sometimes it's got examples at the bottom. Yeah, so here, I, I usually find that this is the most useful uh, bit here. But, but anyway, if you go back to the top, um, Again, you have a um, round. Okay, it takes two arguments. X is equal to zero and digits is equal, sorry, X is the value and digits, the default value. So if you don't specify a value for digits, uh, it's gonna be assumed that it's zero. Um, so we can actually specify our own over uh, a digit value. So we're gonna say round uh, weight, and kilograms, oops, typing is not right. But digits is equal to, I'm going to round it to two decimal places. And you can see that it's now been rounded to, to from 3.162278, it's been rounded to 3.16. If you actually don't, if you keep the argument, in, in, the, in the same order, then you don't actually have to specify uh, the, the keyword digits. So you, you can get by by saying round weight and kilograms and just specify the number of decimal places too. Okay. So, so because you've, they're specified in the same order as you expect to get them, uh, that works fine. However, if you were, were going to do it, if you're going to swap the order round, then you actually have to specify the keywords. Otherwise, it was not going to understand it. So if you say digits, digits is equal to two, and the value is equal to weight in kilograms. And by the value, I say X is equal to, sorry. So here X is being used in a, in a, in a kind of, a, it's not quite an assignment uh, if you're saying if the, if the keyword is equal to this. So it's, it's more like a logical thing. Okay, so that works. But you have to specify the keywords. If you don't specify the keywords, if you were to say, oh, sorry. Round two, weight, and kilograms. It's not going to work. Oh, sorry, it does work. Uh, but by it's a bit, well, it's adding two as opposed to the value that you really want rounded. I thought it was going to be another thing. Okay. okay, so 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 we've we've seen how a function can work and the arguments you can feed to a function. It's worth looking at the help page. Uh, there's another way of getting help as well. If you can't remember the question, Mike, uh, maybe this will be more memorable. Help round will also work. Um, that will give you the man, the man page.
Okay. Fine. So that's a function. Um, now we're going to do vectors. Oh, so so one other thing. So I said to you that you got this um, little um, table of contents. If you put the three dashes, no, maybe it's four dashes. Yeah, it's four dashes. You see that vectors and data that now appears in your in your table of contents. And now if you click on the on the elements, you can actually navigate between them. So that can be great for, for navigating between your code if it's so long. And if you click on the, the, the little document there, it will hide the, the table of contents. Okay, so, so now we're going to do some vectors. So the vectors are the most basic data structure in R. Everything is based around a vector. So at the moment you've seen weighting kilograms as a single value. So that's a vector of length one, okay? So a vector is just a number of elements. Um, I'll, I'll say this and I'll, I'll deal with it in more detail. The thing about a vector in R, they must, be of, must all be of the same type. And, I, and I'll, get, I'll come back to that later on. Okay, so we can create a vector. So again, we're going to use weight in kilograms or so we're killing this, this variable. We're going to do the alt or opt minus to do an assignment. And then we're going to use the C function. And it's either for combine or concatenate. And you can give it a list of values. So in this case, we're going to give it uh, 50, 60, 65, and 82. The spacing it doesn't matter. I mean, so you've got a set of values separated by a comma within the C operator, which is either combine or concatenate. If you type command enter, control enter, you'll actually see it. If you actually look at the, the global environment variable, you see that weight in kilograms has, has got this num thing in front of it. That num stands for numerical. We'll come back to that later on. It has got four values. So this is what the one colon four means. And the values are 50, 60, 65, and 82. Um, you can also do the same thing by typing the variable name here and just uh, command enter, control enter, and you will get the, the values on the, on the console. So, so sometimes you, the, um, when things get too large for the environment, that it will see it will give you the first four or five elements, and then it'll do dot dot dot, and so on. Um, you can also have vectors that are um, characters, so animals. We're going to create another one called animals, and alt minus, and you're going to do the, the C operator, and then we're going to have a set of animals. Oops, sorry set of animals. Let's put in a, a mouse and then a rat and a dog. So if you type command enter, you will assign a variable called animals with mouse, rat and dog. And you can actually see that appearing in your global environment, animals, CHR, that stands for character. And then, then you've got a one colon three, um, so that um, you've got three elements uh, from one to three. Again, you can dereference it or see what the values are by doing animals, command, enter, and it will list them in the console. So you can find out the type of um, structure that you're using by typing class, weight in kilograms, so, uh, so the class is numeric, 
And if you remember, uh, the weight in kilograms is a list of values called 50, 60, 65, 82. Um, and the class of animals. Come on, enter. It's character. So again, mouse, rat, and dog. Now, what's very apparent here that all of these are of the same type. So the first one all had numerical value, 50, 60. Uh, we'll come back to what happens when you start mixing uh, uh, values. There's something else that's kind of interesting, um, which can be useful later on. Um, you can look at what's inside um, one of these objects. So you can type for S, STR, I think of it for structure of the weight in kilograms. Command enter. Okay, so you can see here uh, the same thing you can actually see in the global environment. You may not always have our studio, so these commands are worth knowing, but it's, it's effectively the same thing. So the weight in kilograms is something that is of type numerical. There are four elements and it's giving you the, the first four values. There are only four values, so that, that's not an issue. You can do the same thing. You can look at the, the structure, SDR for of animals. Okay, command enter. And you can see that this time you have um, a structure of type character. So all, all the content is based on character data. Um, you have three elements, one, two, three, and it's showing you what the elements are, mouse, rat, dog. If, the, if, the, if, the, if this vector was too long, it would just show you the first three or the first four. We'll come back and we'll see that later or happening on later. So, so you can actually see that in our there's, there's two things. There's, there's a, a data type, which is the base type, um, which the, of, of the type of data. And then you've got something that holds the data together, which is the data structure. The, 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 the one that is the most basic structure that you have in bar R, and it, it's basically everything is, is built on this, is, um, is a vector data type. So a vector data type has, has is a set of elements, all of which must be of the same data type. So at the moment you've only met two data types, you've met numerical data type and you've met character data type. In a similar fashion, and there's a number of other data structures, some of which we will not cover. Um, so the next one will be the, a matrix, which we're not gonna cover in this course, but I'll just talk about it a little bit. A matrix is just a square or rectangular uh, set of numbers. It's, 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 it's like a, a, a two-dimensional vector. And so it's basically a vector where all the vectors are of the same length. So in a vector, all the data elements have been, must be of the same data type, i.e. all characters, all numerical. A matrix is all, all so it's composed of a set of vectors all of the same length. So you end up with a rectangle or a square set of numbers. And again, all of, all of these must be of the same type or of this and of the same length. You can have um, what's called an array, which is a multi-dimensional matrix. I, you've got a set of slices. Uh, so again, it'll be a set of matrices, all of the same length and all of the same height. So um, we're not gonna cover matrices and arrays, but, but they, they do exist out there. The next data type, which is another rectangular data type, is a data frame, which we are going to cover. Um, a data frame is, again, a rectangular set of um, objects where, where you've got a, a set of vectors um, which must all be of the same length, hence you end up with a rectangular structure. But each of the columns can be of a different data type. Uh, but each data type must be, so each, 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 each of the, each, yeah. So again, a, a data frame is a set of vectors all of the same length, 
by each of the columns, which is a vector, must be of, of the same data type, but the, each of the, the columns can be of different data types. So that's where the difference between a, a data frame and a matrix is. And a matrix, all, everything is must be the same. In a data frame, all, all the columns must, must be of the same length, but they, they can be of different data types. And the, the other, the most general thing in, in R is a list. Where a, a list is a is a is a as a vector, but each of the elements can be of a different data type, and there can be different data structures as well. We're not going to cover lists. So for the time being, although I, I, I may have bamboozled you, all you have to worry about are vectors and data frames. If you want to know more, you can go and talk, uh, learn about matrices and arrays later on, and lists at uh, some future point. If you program an R, you probably use vectors and data frames most of the time. So, so let, let me just talk a little bit more about the different data types you can actually have in R. And so if you have, I'm gonna see, just use X to, to make the typing easy. I'm gonna say X, assign a value of one. And then I'm gonna do the, this thing called type off, which will tell you what the data type of that element is. Oh, sorry, type, type of bytes, not of one. Okay, so you'll see that that is a double. So a double is a, is a numerical type. Um, um, doubles tend to, a double is just a real number. So as, 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 although you don't have a, a point, uh, as, as, as something with a dot in it, in, in this case, the dot doesn't appear. Um, so uh, we think of that one as a 1.0. If you wanted to make a counting number or an integer, then you have to do something special. Uh, you have to do a one and put an L at the back end of it. So if you do type of X, right, um, um, Oh, that's sorry. I didn't assign it. Sorry. If you do the assignment and then you do type of x, okay, that's an integer. An integer is a counting number or a number without the the dot in it. Uh, unfortunately, here you haven't got a dot. By the default, there is to make it a, a double or or a, or something that assumes that there's a dot. So one here by default is the same as uh, 1.0. Okay, so if you want to make it, um, yeah, go on. Sorry, Mario. Um, I, I, uh, I was lost a little bit here. So you um, assign uh, one, which if you don't put any dot, it just assumes that it's double. So it just, it has double digits. And then if you put a certain like character next to it, uh, when I try to run it, it just still runs as double. And I see you, you've you got the same issue, but then you did something to get it. Yeah, so, so, so what I did, I, I forgot to, to, to run this, I forgot to run that line. So when I did type of X, I hadn't executed that line there. So it was, X, it was, it was X still had a one, not a, one of these. So that's why I got a double. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, so, so if you execute that line and then execute that line, in fact, if you, the other thing you can do is if you highlight both lines and if you type command enter or control enter, it'll execute both lines at the same time. Um, Thank you. Okay, so, so that, was my, that was my mistake. Let me just see this. Um, these are subtleties. So these are things that you don't have to remember. You just have to be aware that something's going to happen to your vectors um, if, if you mix your data types. Uh, I'm just showing you all the different data types that you have in R are. There's another one called uh, a logical or a Boolean, uh, and that's usually specified by capital true, and the alternative be, it will be capital false. So we do type of X, uh, execute both lines, otherwise it's gonna get, okay. That's, that's, it comes out as a logical. Oh, okay. I've got I've got two I think two more. Um, so the um, 
I, this is probably one that you're never going to use, but again, just for the sake of completeness, um, unless you're an engineer, it's going to make, or a physicist or a mathematician, you know, you may not have met complex numbers. So um, a complex number is composed of a real part and an imaginary part, where the imaginary part is the square root of one. Um, so you can actually do uh, complex uh, arithmetic mathematics in R. Sorry, square root of minus one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Not it's, one square, not square root of one, square root so of minus one. So did I say one? one. I, okay, I, I did. I, so I was thinking minus one and I said one, my apologies. Um, and if you type type of, again, this is, this is just for the sake of completeness. You're probably not gonna see that and it should return complex. And finally, you have, again, you don't have to use Mario, but just any character and type of X. Oh no, sorry, I, I forgot to do the same again. So I need to execute that one and then execute this one. And that's the type character. So there are these two things and now I called um, the, they've got these these data types which are the basic characteristics of the data that you contain right um, and then you have these things called data structures the one where we've really addressed and dealt with are vectors I've mentioned a couple of other ones that we're not going to cover like matrices arrays and lists uh, and then we are going to cover data frames later on so for for, for so yeah, and the important thing in vectors, right? A vector is is of length of some given length, one to a very large number. Uh, but what must what what is important is that they must all be of the same type. Now, what happens when you start mixing these data types? Um, so there is a an exercise here. Um, uh, okay, there's something else that somebody run into. If you type if you, in your R Studio, if you if you click on that, that will maximize the that panel. If you click on the the that that the, the little minus thing there, that will minimize it. And if you click on the two windows, that will return both windows to the same thing. Okay, so so here's here's a challenge for you. Um, as I said to you. Of, of, a vector must be all of the same data type. I've covered, uh, I think it's six data types. Uh, numeric is, contains both integers and doubles. So it's, if something's numeric, it's either integer or double. Um, so what I want you to do, and I'll give you five minutes, is to see what happens when you have a vector that, can, that mixes the data types. And again, all you have to do is uncomment these things, remove the, the hashes and execute the, the, the line. So I'm going to get the, my little, I'll give you five minutes and tr try that. If you finish that one, uh, I think there's, uh, I, I, no, there's not more. Okay, so try that one. Five minutes to try that exercise. And um, uh, this is another good opportunity if you have any questions, so please shout out. Um, I will be getting a parcel between 12 and 3, um, so I may have to scoot off to open the door and then I'll come back. So I may, I may be AWL for about a minute or two. But that's not happening until 12. Or I guess not until 3 probably. So try the exercise.
So again, if anybody has any questions, please just pipe up. So I just had, um, I mean, I, um, I wanted to ask about why do you think it happens, but should I wait until everyone finishes? Yeah, give, give, give it, uh, 40, you got 47 seconds, yeah, just. Okay. Uh, Okay. So, so let's quickly go over this. So you've got something that's called a mixture of numbers and characters. So what's going to happen to that? Um, well, you can easily ex find out by, by executing it. Um, you can actually see that, okay, it's been assigned. We can either do a type of... Um, Let's, let's do a type of just now. Type of numchar. Ah. Type of. Mm. Ah, just do it. Ah, just tell me what you want. Num, thank you. Numchar. And if I execute that, they're all characters. So you can see, although we've got a mixture of numerical um, data and uh, characters, they've, they've all become characters. Okay. So in a similar fashion, if I execute the next line, num, num logical, uh, I'm going to be lazy and look, just look at the environment, um, pipane, uh, because that, that oh, except no, num logical here. Okay. So we have a mixture of numerical and logical values. But you can see from the the, car, the 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 environment pane that num logical is the numbers. So all of them, well, the logical has been become a number, which incidentally is is one. Um, um, if it had been false, it would have been become a zero. Um, because let's, let's mix, let, where we get mixed characters and logicals. Um, if I look at here, again, I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to, I could have type off, but I'm going to say, look at the, the environment pane. You can actually see that the, the, the character logical thing is all of type character, right? So the true in this instance has not become a numerical value, it's become a string uh, of true. And then finally, you've got one, two, three, and four, where the four has been quoted, and therefore that's a character. So you've got a mixture of um, um, numerical and character data. And if I do control and uh, command enter or control enter, uh, tricky, um, which is just there, tricky is all characters. So why does this happen? As I said to you earlier on, um, the, the, the thing that identifies a vector is that they must all be of the same type, which means that if you have a mixed set of data types, there's, there's what is called a type coercion, and there's an order to this. So um, uh, uh, let me give you the order. I'll paste this in there in the chat and I'll also paste it in the I don't know what do you call it the etherpad if I can find it. Uh, so many windows. I'll paste it at the bottom of the etherpad. 
Okay, so you have uh, this tag coercion taking place. Um, so I've that in line 283 in the Etherpad. Um, let me just talk through it. So everything's okay if everything is, is, is of the same type, but when you start mixing your data types, um, uh, the, 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 there's a hierarchy. So if everything's illogical, you're fine. If you have a mixture of logicals and integers or numerics, uh, Right, so indices and doubles are also just numerics. Um, um, then everything will become um, an integer or, or, or a double. If you have logicals and integers, and integers you have to specify by that, that little, that uh, capital L or the, um, on the, at the end, um, then everything becomes an integer. If you have logicals, integers and doubles all mixed together in the same vector, everything will be made into a double. If you have a mixture of uh, logicals, integers, doubles, and a complex number, everything becomes complex. And then the, 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 if you have one character, everything becomes a character. So the, 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 there's this type coercion that takes place in a vector, um, which you need to be aware of because it may be doing things to your data you don't quite expect. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have know about what type of data you're using, uh, except to be aware of that if you want, if you expect to see some kind of numerical data and it's behaving as as a as a character, so you're trying to do multiplications. You, you saw that uh, five five and six worked, um, so you could multiply five times six. That was fine. Okay, that gives you thirty. But if you try and multiply five by uh, character five by six, that's not gonna work. Okay, you're gonna get an error. So if you start getting errors <clears throat> like that, then it's worth thinking about the, the type of data. Is it, so, so look at, is my data of the type I expect? So I expect you to see numerical data. So if you do a type of on, on, on the, the vector that you're expecting, and suddenly it's not, a, a, um, it's not a, a, a numerical, you've got some characters embedded in it. So everything has become a character. Then you have to go back to your data and identify, okay, what's wrong? How, why is this being interpreted wrong? So this is where the, the, this tab coercion really becomes important. Uh, sometimes it may, you may get some unexpected behavior because of this tab coercion. And I think that's possibly the most important take home message uh, from this. Uh, you don't have to worry about the types too much just now, although if you start becoming more seriously into our, uh, delving more seriously into our, then you have to um, have some type of understanding. Does that answer your question, Ali, or, or do you, you're okay, okay. Uh, uh, does anybody yeah, else have a, is anybody really confused by that? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. For example, should we always use uh, R script instead of using R script always? Can we also use console directly? Yes, you can. You can use the console directly. It depends what you want to do. So, as I said to you before, the way I would normally do it, I would play with the R console until I get it right. Once I get it right, then I would move it into an R script. So as I, as you saw before, uh, if you if you anything that you type in the console also is put in your history, and if you think, oh yeah, that, that's that, that's what I wanted, then you can highlight there, and then you can either move it to the console, or you can move it to the source. So you keep a record of it, but but it depends on the complexity of what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do something that, that spans multiple lines or has complicated expressions, you do probably want to put it in a in, 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 in the, the source. If you're just happy to 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 play with small expressions or small amounts of well, not not small amounts, but but just a couple of expressions will achieve what you want, then you, you can use the console. It swings and roundabouts. Uh, if you want to keep a record, I would probably use the 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 script. Um, if, if I just was playing about to get something right, I would use the console. Is that, does that answer the question then, Mark? Thank you. Yeah. 
Thanks. Yeah, okay. Anybody else? Mario? Yeah. Sorry, I have a question. I have sometimes the problem that when I import data sets into R that um, vectors are recognized as integers even though they look numeric. You know how that, why that happens? Like when does R recognize something as numeric and as, then as integer? Well, I mean, numeric has a superset or rather it contains integers and doubles. Um, it's, it's, it's a, why is that a problem to you? You're trying to do something that, I mean, you, you can cast things. So, so let, okay, so, so let me show you. Um, so if you did have a vector, so, so let's do type of, which one was it? Uh, one had all, all characters. I'm oh, sorry, environment's what I want. So, no, yeah, weight in kilograms. So, so type of weight in kilograms. So if I execute that, okay, it's returning that the, 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 um, the weight is an, are doubles, i.e. floating point numbers, although there is no dot. It's an, there is an implicit dot in that data. Suppose you wanted that as integers. Um, so, so waiting kilograms, I'm going to call it two. I'm going to keep it separate. You can, there, there are conversion factors. You, if, you, if you look at and, and the help, there's a whole bunch of as integer, integer, wait, and kilograms. Okay, so now mm -hmm. when I do type of, well, that's very interesting. Oh, because I didn't exercise it, I was waiting kilograms too. And I, so I, and it's, it's, it's interpreted as integers. So you can swap between data types fairly straightforwardly um, and between integers and floating point numbers. In most cases, having an integer and a double, uh, it's not gonna make much of a difference. So although sometimes you explicitly want integers as opposed to doubles. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so um, if you're reading it using one of them, um, are you reading the data from a file? Yeah. I mean, you can either explicitly do a type casting of that's of annoyance, but you can also tell it uh, what data type to expect, depending on what, what, how you're reading your data. If, if, if you hang around at the, the lunch bit, you can show me what you're doing and I'll see if I can help you. Um, but but it, at some level, you can easily convert between the different types. Uh, usually the bigger problem is, is when you, you have a, a numeric, set data and it's suddenly being read in as, as characters. And there's something else that can be annoying, which we'll hopefully we'll cover later on is factors. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. So, so well, yeah, hang, yeah, hang around at lunch and then we'll, 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 we'll deal with that. Your All problem. Right. Okay, so where are we now? Okay. So, so we, we now have vectors, we've got arrays of numbers, okay. So we, we, have, um, we have animals, so we saw animals. So let, let's have a look at animals. Okay, so you've got mouse, rat and dog. Now, these are, these are fairly simple um, arrays. I mean, this could be 10,000, uh, elements or something like that, and you want to put, you want to get one of these elements. So how do you do that? Suppose you want a uh, rat. Okay, how do you get rat with that mouse and dog? The way that you get that in R is you, is you specify animals, you put a square bracket, and you give it the, the, the element number. So you want the second element. Now in R you start counting from one. So the first element is number one. There are some other data languages. If you use Python, C, or C++, you start counting from zero. And R, the first element is always one. So, so, um, 
So if you want to just write, then if you typed, and then if the animal square bracket two, you get rat. Okay. So what if you wanted two animals? So we wanted rat and dog. Um, you can put a vector into the into the, the square brackets. So animals. And this time you want two elements, you, so you, you, you use this combined or concatenated operator, and you give it the elements that you want. You want the second element, and you want the third element. Okay, so now we're going to have rat and dog. So you're getting two elements. You can actually uh, have more, you can, you can create more animals. Ah, spell animals, right? Okay. Alt minus for the, the, the thing. Um, and now you can have animals. Square bucket. And then you can give it a vector. Oops, sorry, wrong, wrong. I mistyped. Okay, so now you can give a, a, a so long as you give it with the right number of elements, um, so from one to three, uh, this will work. So you can give it, you want the first element, which is, uh, what's the first element? A mouse, you're going to have a rat, you're going to have a dog, then you're going to have another rat, then you're going to have another mouse, then you want a dog, then you want a rat. Uh, sorry, I hope that goes the other way around. And, okay. So I'm going to put a, a, a round brackets around this so that it, it assigns it and it prints it out. Oh, I've done something wrong. So you, you notice when the syntax was wrong, it puts your, oh, no, that's right. Okay. So, okay. So, so this time I've made a, a, a bigger set of animals by looking at them the values and the, and the animals that we already. So I've taken element one, so I put a rat, I've taken element two, sorry, element one is a mouse, element two is a rat, element three is a dog, then I put another rat, then I put a, a mouse. So you can make a, a bigger set of um, animals. Um, Actually, I, don't know, I don't know if I've shown you this, but, but something else, suppose you wanted to extend your set of animals. So animals, um, so we have, you put combine, suppose we wanted an elephant at the head of the table, so we can put elephant, and then have animals. So I've added an elephant at the beginning of the list and then the, the other three animals, uh, mouse, rat and dog at the end of the list. Okay, so let's check. Ah. So, so you see you've got elephant, mouse, rat and dog. If you wanted to prepend an animal, so let's have animals again, let's add the, oops, C. And the existing set of animals that I already have. Uh, let's add a, a gorilla. I'm, I'm going to put a bracket so I don't have to type animals again. Okay, and if I, I, if I enter that, you'll see that my list is now elephants, mouse, rat, dog and gorilla. So you can easily add animals at the beginning of the list and at the end of the list. It doesn't have to be um, one animal. It could be, uh, I, I'm running out of animals, uh, a, a chimp. Notice that if I do this again, I will add gorilla again. So I'll have two gorillas, but I'm going to do that anyway. Um, okay, so I have a uh, an elephant, a mouse, a rat, a dog, a gorilla, and a gorilla. So something else I could do is if I wanted to overwrite my gorilla because I got too many animals, I could say animals 
the sixth element, and this is where these numbers come in useful. So the, the first element of the second line is element number six. So that's the sixth element. Um, okay, so the, I want to overwrite the sixth element. I'm going to put um, a donkey. So if I type animals, if I type command or oh, control enter, you'll see that the, the gorilla that was there before are overwritten with donkey. So this is a very versatile way of actually playing with lists, uh, sorry, vectors. Uh, incidentally, uh, uh, a vector is a, is, a, is a subset of lists because, I mean, a list can be of any, you can have mixed data types and a vector is all the same data type, but clearly that's a subset of, of lists. So let's, let's have a look at something else. Um, do we have, okay, let's create a, a weighting grams array. Again, the, the numbers here are, uh, yeah, numbers, but they are kind of, no, yeah, just type the numbers I type. 21, 34, 39, 39, uh, ah, 54, 55. Okay, um, so if I, if I carry out that assignment, If I create another array of, um, oh no, sorry, no, I'm not creating another array. I'm going to use a logical array, wait. I'm switching right to another one, I don't know if I Wait. I think it's about to, uh, to running out, bro. Wait and grams. And I'm going to dereference it this time. I'm going to take the values. When I say I dereference, I say I take the values from. I'm going to take a, a, a logical um, set of. So I want to keep the first element. I don't want the second element for. So I'm going to specify. So when I say I'm going to keep, I put a true. When I don't want, I'm going to put a false. I, so I don't want the third element either. I don't, I want the fourth and I want the fifth element, true, ah, comma. So by specifying true, I'm keeping an element, so in this case I'm going to keep 21, um, false, I don't want the second element, I don't want the third element, I want the fourth element and I want the fifth element. Okay, so if I execute this command, you get 21, 54 and 55. And that's indeed what you get, 21, 54, 55. So this is a very cumbersome way of actually um, specifying what elements you want. But there's a trick to this. If I wanted to just have the elements that are bigger than 50, which is a different set of elements. So if I say weight in grams greater than 50, if I execute that, you'll see that the first element is not greater than 50, the second element is not greater than 50, the third element is not greater than 50, the fourth element is greater than 50, and the fifth element is greater than 50. So you can put a logical operation um, within your square bracket to actually filter out the values that you want. So if this was ages and you only, you had a huge set of numbers of people that were, um, uh, well, of all ages, and you only wanted to keep a set of people that are over 50 years old, um, you, could, you, you, may, you could use this mechanism. Uh, in this case, you've got weights in both. If you wanted to keep the weights of the door mice that are bigger than 50 or whatever. So we put weight in weight in grams, and then you specify that are greater than 50. Okay, so it's exactly the same mechanism as, as, as you saw before, but now you're actually using it to filter 
all of those elements that are greater than 50, right? Does that make sense? Um, can I ask a question, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, they have a question you feel to ask at any point. Um, so on uh, weight um, on the line gram, where you use the um, true, false, false, true, true. Mm -hmm. um, so you are not um, basically removing the data from the original data. So you're just not showing some of them, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I could I could overwrite that array, as you say, by assigning it back to itself. Probably not a good idea, but but no, I'm not I'm not overwriting. Unless I make an assignment, the values stay the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? Okay. So so now you can make these expressions um, a little bit more complex by using the two operators. Okay. There's there's a an and operator which is you use a single upper ampersand and there's a, an OR operator, which is a, a single vertical line. Okay, so for something to be true with AND, uh, it must be both um, values must be true. If, so A and B to be true, it must mean that A is true and B is true. If A is true and B is false, then that's false. If A is false, and B is true, that's false. And if A is false and B is false, that's also false. Uh, for, for, for the OR operator, then only one of the conditions have to, has to be true. So you've got A, and A or B. If A is true and B or B is true, sorry, uh, then that, that's true. If A is true or B is false, that is also true because A is true. Um, a is, I'm getting lost here, A is false and B or B is true, then that's true because B is true. And if, but if A is false and or B is false, then everything is false. So, so but that is false. So you can use this to construct uh, uh, more complex expressions. So you can say the weight bracket. So the weight in grams is greater than 30 and the weight and oops in grams is less than 50. Okay, so here you, you're also getting two new operators introduced. Uh, well, you've seen the greater than, but you've got the less than sign. Um, if you execute that, okay, sorry, weight in grams. Helps it with underscore. Okay. So basically that you it's okay. You get two values out, 34 and 39. That's fine because they're both um, over 30 and under 50. Let's try another one. The weight and grams. Uh, and we're gonna say the weight again in grams. And this time you want it to be less than or equal to, so that's how you do it less than or equal to 30 or the weight in grams must be equal to uh, 55. I can't remember there's a value. I don't know if that sounds anything. Okay, let's execute that. Okay, so you got 21, which is under 30, and we've got one value is 55. That's fine too. Let's try another one. Let's try a final one. Weight and grams again. Weight and grams. Uh, it's greater than or equal to 30. So that's how you do greater than or equal to 30. Oops, 30. And the weight in grams must be exactly equal to 21. Okay, that's never going to work. 
right? Because it cannot be equal to 21 and be greater than 30. So, so that's going to return uh, a numeric zero. So uh, there are it returns no elements. No elements match the criteria. So you, 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 um, you don't have that. In a similar fashion, if we go to animals, you can do animals. Where um, animals uh, is equal to cat. I don't think we've got any cats. Um, or animals is equal to Right. So again, the very same principle, you only want to pick out those animals. Um, that are much, so that either are cats or rats, you have one rat. Okay. Now you can see that this will become really tedious, right? If you, so if you, if you wanted to do that again, um, and, and then you had a list that you wanted a cat, uh, a rat, and a gorilla. Um, that would be enormously tedious. So there's a, there's a shortcut you can use um, in, in a, for this type of um, expression. So you can say animals, and then you got this funny operator. And so give me only those animals and then you give it a vector of what animals that you want. So if you want, um, say, a rat and you want the elephant, let's have another one. So if you wanted three animals for that, for the, for, for the, before you have to put, um, actually, let's do it. So I'm going to copy that line. I'm going to repeat it. So if you wanted an elephant as well, or animals equals, so this is enormously tedious, right? I mean, if you wanted to get one of three, um, um, having to do a long litany of lines, that would just be incredibly, or because I can't spell elephant, that would just be, oh, I still can't spell elephant. Oh, we say elephant, not elephant. Okay, so that's back out this time, and I can't spell elephant here. So this is a much neater syntax. If you wanted to add the cat, you could add the cat. So you're creating a vector. So you're going to check all the animals uh, as to whether they are in the list that you give it, or the, the vector rather, and if they exist, it'll return the value. Uh, so that's a much, oh, sorry, it's returning a, an actual logical expression. So if you actually wanted the, the values, you'd have to put that in the square brackets. So animals. And, and then you say cat and elephant. Okay, that's in the wrong. I forgot to call cat. So this is something that is annoying that you get the, the double thing. So you've got to remember to delete the last one, not the, the first one, otherwise it deletes both of them. Oh. Okay, so now when I run that, it will return, it will give me the values. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, because I didn't want cat, I wanted to rat. Okay, so you can see how the the the, the n operator with the, the percentage and close percentage and can be really useful when you're trying to um, find the the, 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 the the values that you want in, in a list of characters. Okay, so here's a here's a. Here's a, 
uh, this is a challenge, so I, I, we're going to do it collectively. So I'm going to, this is this, this expression, right? It says for is greater than five is true. Why is it returning four is greater than five is true? Is it because it thinks its character is alphabetically four right. is five? Yeah, so it's doing a lexical sort or, or it's doing an alphabetical sort. So the two apps are in the same order. Um, um, but um, and the, the, um, the O is high, has a higher value than the I. So it can show you. So O is this true? So it's going character by character, uh, and then and then when it gets to the O, it says, "Okay, O is higher than I in terms of um, the ASCII value, or, or maybe just the ordering." Um, so so the if it, so the the the, the, I, the five will come before the four, and but if you if you read that if you read it semantically, you think. That's not true. Four is higher than five. Okay. Sorry, lower than five. So that's not true. But uh, lexically, in terms of the, the alphabetical ordering, that is indeed a correct statement. Okay. So so let, let me cover, where are we? We've got 19 minutes. So let me cover the next bit. I've only got a couple more um, statements. And, um, and then we'll try the challenge and then we, we can go for lunch. Um, so let me create a new um, character on it. Height, height. Uh, not the same as the one that's below. You need that for the exercise. I'm going to create uh, two, four, four, any not available, uh, and six. So and you saw yesterday that there are different ways to express missing data, unknown values. So in, in R, you can use an NA um, to, to specify that, that that information was not available. When you're reading data, you can treat uh, spaces, not spaces, blank values as NAs or, 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 or do other kinds of mappings. But, but let's assume that you, you've read this data, you've got this data from somewhere, and there's an NA in it. Now, there's a whole bunch of other routines. Uh, so the mean will take the, the average of, of, a, of a set of variables. The problem is when you have um, an NA in your list of values, the result becomes an NA. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to surround that by a bracket. Otherwise, I'm going to have to type. Oh, no, that's fine. Sorry, I don't have to because I'm not assigning it. So if you if you if you if you run take the mean or the average of heights, because you have an NA in it, uh, the resulting value is also unknown because it says, okay, I've got an unknown value. I don't know how to treat that. I'm going to signal to you that there's data that's not defined in there. You have to do, do something about it. In a similar fashion, uh, there's a max and there's a min as well, and there's a number of other functions. If you try and do that, heights. Um, ah, I can't spell. That will also return uh, an NA, right? Because it doesn't know what to do with that. That, that missing value could be high or could be low. So it's just telling you, you have to look at this data and tell me how to deal with it. You can actually tell it, tell it how to deal with it. You can you can do the, the mean, again, mean, height, and you can tell it to ignore any NAs. So if you find any NAs, remove them from the, oh, sorry, that should be a dot. Or um, delete it, and you set that to true. So the default is false. And this is saying, if you find any, any values in it, just ignore them, okay? So now when you when you execute that command, control enter or command enter, right, it's actually calculated the average. And in a similar fashion, 
max um, height equals true, true, not true. Right, it's actually giving you the, 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 the highest value. So and then for a lot of functions support this NARM, so remove any any values or not available values. Um, so you can certainly uh, use that as a mechanism, but sometimes um, you have to do it yourself. And you're gonna just show you uh, three different ways of doing this. So there's a function called NA, uh, sorry, is any so you make oh god s n a so you're making a query s says value and n a and then you give it the argument height okay so when you execute that it'll return a logical bar of um variable of so the first value is not an NA, so it returns false the second value is not an NA, so it says false. The third value is not an NA, so it's a false. Oh, we have an NA, so the, the fourth value is true, and the fifth value is false. However, what you want is you want to invert that. So you want the opposite. And the way that you do that in I, if you put an exclamation mark in front of that expression, it, which is basically a not operator, so it inverts a true to a false and a false to a true. So not an NA. Okay, so it's now saying it's, it says not an NA. So if you, if you execute that, um, it's saying true, true, true. So the full file is false because it is an NA. And now you can use that to actually filter the data out again, height. So, and then you can say not as NA. Okay, so so now the data has messed out the 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 what do I call it the, the the NA. So you could now do operations like the mean on heights square bracket not as NA heights. This is a bit of overkill because you've got the uh, NARM of, um, parameter that you can um, um, assign. But if you wanted to do it yourself, oh, I've got a mistake. I can't spell height. I can spell height. Height. Where was that? Oh. I don't understand. Where, where is high eights? Oh, oh, there, sorry. So that now works. Slightly overkill because, as I said to you, you can use the NARM, uh, but 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 you do want to be able to to filter out uh, only those values that are not any. Two, two more methods of doing this. You can also use na.omit, um, which is available. I never use this one. I tend to use the, the expression you just saw. I can't spell heights again. Okay, so I mean, it's returning other stuff as well, which I'm not too sure about but it's giving you the values. So this is uh, attributes, which is a metadata based on the object that you created. But again, here is returned the, um, the, all, the, all the cases with um, the NAs don't exist. So that's one way, and I'll show you one other way, uh, which is NA omit. No, I've just done that one. Oh, sorry, complete cases. So there's complete cases of heights, which I think this will return a logical array. 
So it's, it's exactly the same um, as uh, not as any. So that's embedding the, 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 the exclamation point. So if you wanted to return the heights, complete. Right. Then you would do it that way. So you, you don't have to know three different ways of doing this. Uh, you just, at, uh, you, at some point, you, you'll come to love on one of these. I tend to love and use this one here. Uh, but I guess you've got the least amount of typing to do. Um, but it's up to you. Fine, let's do a. Uh, I've got, got a bit more time. So let's do um, a challenge. I'm trying to do I'm trying to maximize this one. Okay, so here you have. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I made you type all of this <laughs> and it's already typed. And this is a much larger array. I thought this was the, the challenge. Sorry, okay. So I made you type more than you had to because it, it was all, all here, exactly the same stuff. Uh, you can go through that. So here you've got a different function we didn't see before, which is the median, and you've got heights and you've got NARM. Okay, so here you've got uh, using this vector of height and inches, and it's the same as the one above. I think it's a, it might be the same one, but you can you can just uncomment it and execute it. You, okay, using this vector of height and inches, create a new vector that with n is removed. Okay, you know how to do that fairly easily. Use the medium uh, to calculate the median of. Well, it's kind of a bit pointless because it's showing you how to do it late above there. Yeah. Use that to figure out. Oh gosh, sorry, I've lost there. Use, use R to figure out how many people in the set are taller than some, some value. Okay, since 67 inches. Again, you know how to do that. So don't do this, but next bet. So do these, these three challenges. It shouldn't take you too long. I'll give you five minutes and then you can have a break for lunch and measure. We can talk about your data. Uh, well, um, what's the timer? The timer is here. I'll give you five minutes. Go, try it. Actually, I'll give you, let's do three minutes. It's not going to do it. I'll let you uh, five minutes. You can relax. Actually, before you go to lunch, we'll download some data and then you can go to lunch. So don't go to lunch after we've done this. And again, this is an opportunity. If you're confused about anything, again, don't suffer in silence. Please do ask. No question is stupid. If you're having a, a doubt in your mind, probably other people are having the same doubt or a similar doubt. Thank 
Actually, I should get you to use the, 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 the what do we call it, the non-verbal indicators when you're done. If you put a tick when you're done, uh, then you, you don't actually necessarily have to do for the, the duration of the... Um, you've got 20. Uh, somebody remind me to do that next time for an exercise as opposed to... Ask when yeah, cool. you remove the NAs, it still keeps the original like N value, doesn't it? So if you have 10 values, three of which are NAs, it doesn't, uh, it still calculates from 10. And I don't oh. think so. I think it calculates because I mean, how can you calculate from sorry? Because I mean, it, it won't know, ah, go away. It won't know what I mean. How can you calculate from an NA? I think I think the average is taken from seven. We could check. Um, well, let's let's let's. Oh, medium is possibly not the best one. Um, okay, but let, 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 we'll we'll check in a second. I I think it doesn't. So let let me let me quickly do this. We'll load some data. Download some data rather. And um, um, um and then you can go for lunch. So, so let me assign the, the, the heights. So I've signed my heights. Um, oh, this one should be relatively easy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, so I'm gonna do the mean just to answer your question, see, if I, see what, um, so we're gonna take heights, heights, and then we're gonna say, I mean, you be you be using medium uh, N A R M is equal to true. Bah. Okay, I'm I'm using the medium because I'm sorry the, the mean because I want to try something. So there's something called length of a vector, and that return the 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 length of a vector. Okay, so there's 21 elements. Let's do the length uh, with S not at any of heights. Ah. Okay, so it's a, it's a symbol. 
interesting. And uh, is that true? Okay, and I think there's a sum operator. Yep. Um, so if I do sum of height, so I think this should be NA because I have not specified to remove the NA. So if I specify RM NA equals true, true. Oh, well, what am I doing wrong? I just have a right side. And e dot rn equals true. Okay, so I'll get to know if I do that and divide by the length of the vector, that should be the same as the mean. And is it going to be the same? What was that telling me? Okay, so let's do by, they're the same, so it makes no difference. 58.7619, and what was the mean? I forgot already. And the mean was 64. Ah. So my mean is lower. Okay, so how many how many I think NAs it should be nineteen um if the NAs removed? Well they, but yeah, but I thought this would remove the NAs, but this oh no, because that's no oh god, sorry, I know what it's wrong. It's the length of height. That that'll give me the right answer. Yeah, so that's the same now. So basically, the question was, does it take into account um, the fact that you got 10 values? Is, is, no, it doesn't. I mean, so it, it, it's, when it's excluding the NAs completely from the thing. So, so if, if you have 10 and then two of those are NAs, you've only really got eight values because you... Does that make sense? I can't remember who asked the question. It does, it does make sense, but I'm just... I'm trying to think about this in context of data sets like where we have tables so you'd have a height and a weight and a age for everyone well if if you don't have the same you know if you have 10 people mm -hmm. all of which may or may not have had their height weight and age in there if it then starts removing NAs it could end up shifting the data slightly so it will remove it on the, on the the places where you don't have the data, I mean, so it won't. Suppose you're missing um, somebody's weight and you're missing somebody's height, and it, it's not the same person. Yeah. Um, 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 then, because if you're taking the average of the the weight, it will only miss out the one where you don't have the weight. It won't miss out the one where you don't have the height. If you see what I mean. Um, um, I think um, if, if, if you have a situation where you've got the data with height and weight and some of the weights are missing, um, if you, I mean, you, you're going to want to decide what to do with that missing data. Yeah. Now, if you take them out, then as NA, um, the RM equals true, takes them out and therefore you divide it by a fewer number. That'll give you the average of the actual data values that you have. If you wanted to do it across the whole set, then you'd have to decide how you want to deal with the missing data, so that you'd have to be, you'd have to impute the NA values into either zeros or some other values. So in this case, if you did it, if you changed all the NAs into zeros, then you'd end up dividing by the full number, mm. but, and you get a lower average or median. But but I mean, you'd have to consider: is that what you really wanted? So I'm just thinking like in, this could be me and it's been a bit mad, in CSV files everything's, you know, separated by a, a comma. Yeah. So you kind of, you need something in there to, to say yes, there should be a value here. So we, we put well, it. Well, generally speaking, you, you don't because when you read CSV files in R or anything else, um, 
comma comma it will assume there is meant to be a value in there and it's missing yeah and in the resultant object data frame in this case it will put na in there for you okay it knows so, yeah. and you don't actually have to do it hmm. it will assume that comma comma there's something missing it becomes an na if you just try to do a straight mean or median or whatever you get the result na and that will tell you you've got missing values so At that's that point, you've got to decide what you're going to do about it yeah so I, I understand that and then when we import it into r it's it's going to give us an na is yeah. comma comma it, it knows there should be something there but there isn't something there but then if i tell it to remove all the nas is that going to shift the data oh no, no no it won't it won't shift the data it, it think of it um, um if you take the the, the expression in square brackets Mm. Um, so is checking for the is NA, the not is NA. Imagine that is an operation in its own right and it creates for you a temporary value of that vector. Okay. Then you take the other operations like the mean or median. It right. doesn't, it's never going to change your original data. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, I understand now. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is that you can also tell it to interpret specific characters as NAs as well. So if you've got um, somebody's use, uh, as you saw Peter yesterday, the, the, the people can use different things. To, uh, so for instance, for height, they could use a negative value for it uh, as an NA. Uh, you, can, you can tell it to interpret negative values as NAs or later on in the post-processing phase, you can convert negative values into NAs. Uh, I put in the, the answer to the final one, and it's my answer. So first of all, you want to ignore anything that's not uh, an NA, so anything that is an NA, and then not, note that the, the expression is, is being calculated from left to right, and then later on you say you only want the heights of people that are greater than 67. Because um, if, you, if you do NA greater than 67, you get an NA, I believe. Uh, so that's not going to work. Um, so you need to remove the, the NAs in the first place. Um, fine. Before you go to lunch, let me, let me do one final thing. And if anybody has any burning questions, they can ask um, during lunch. So, I mean, I'll be around. Um, so you've got this one um, comment. To, if you take out the comments, uh, if you highlight that and you do... Uh, either control shift C or, con or command shift C will remove, automatically remove the commands. What this is going to do is going to download a file um, from this URL here uh, and it's truncated. Okay. And it's going to save it as um, uh, up into your data raw. Remember, we created the data raw. Now, this is important. If you used a different case, if you call it capital data, capital R, change that. Otherwise, it will not see it as being the same as data raw and, the, and the, the download will fail. So make sure that that is the same case and the same um, value that you specified in your data. So here you've got data raw and that's exactly the same. So if you've uncommented it, then if you execute it, it should go away and download the file for you. And you can see it in there. Uh, I've downloaded a 2.9 file, 2.9 megabyte file. Uh, and if you double click on data raw, you should be able to see this, this file there. Um, so um, after you come back from, from lunch, um, we're, we're a bit late, but and we'll just keep the same timing. So I, I guess it's half one, you return it. Slightly truncated lunch. Um, we will um, we'll read this back in and we'll start playing with some, some real data and you'll be introduced to data frames. So if you've dealt with vectors, we'll go into data frames. So you have until half one, go and have lunch. If anybody has a question, Nijam, if you want to talk about your data, we could do that. And if anybody else has a question, please stay behind. I think uh, Mario, it's fine. It was just the question why, when I read in the CSV file, why, why some parameters are recognized as 
numeric and other as, as integers, but I solved it with the S numeric solution that okay. you said. So if, you, if you're happy with that, then you can go for lunch. If anybody That's has fine. a question, um, Thank you. please um, feel free. But, oh, maybe I have a question, sorry. What is oh. the difference with NA omit and NA uh, remove? So uh, any omit, and so it's, I think um, any omit is, is just giving you um, it's missing out all the all the um, NA cases. So so it's basically just it's, it's the same. They're all, they're all doing the same. So any remove and what's the other one? And NA remove and NA omit because when I try to calculate the mean and I put NA omit, it doesn't return oh, anything. Oh, no, no. So NA omit is a function on its own right. And um, NA remove is, a, is, an, is an argument in, in a specific set of intrinsic functions. So this will not work universally across all functions. Um, if, you do, if you do help on, say, on anyone, mean, say, Okay, so you see that one of the, the, the optional arguments is this NARM uh -huh. uh, and uh, the default is false. So if you want to explicitly turn it on, you have to say NARM equals true. Um, right. the, 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 the other one, the NA omit is, is, is a function you can run to pass it into another function. So it's, it's a little bit like the the SNA, not SNA, but, but it's a, this is a more complex expression. This one's simpler in general. Uh, but the NARM is something that you have to have in the function, and it's an optional argument to that function. It's not universally available. If it's not available in that, then you'd probably use NA omit or yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What we've done up to this morning is we have introduced uh, R and R Studio. Um, um, so um, R Studio is an integrated development environment that will help you develop code uh, and allow you to ex execute code. And, and in most instances, that suffices. Um, if um, if you get into R, it's worth looking into R Markdown, which enables you to we put, put both text and graphs in, in the same document. And that's a really handy way of um, developing your um, your research. Uh, very much like Jupyter Notebooks. I think it's better than Jupyter Notebooks, but uh, I guess you can, can play with that. Um, it, it, it can, you can also put it directly out as a paper or a publication. You can also write books uh, in a, uh, using a, a book down, which is a generalized thing. <clears throat> anyway, so so we, we cover some of the basics of of, of R Studio. Um, we've gone on to look at R itself. Uh, we, we looked about the, the different data types that you can have in R. Um, so you got you got your your logicals. You've got your uh, numeric, which is integers and doubles. You have your um, um, oh gosh, what you have your complex numbers. You have your and you have your, your characters and and the, the the thing about a vector is that you gotta have is is a, a set of elements all of the same type. Um, um, so this is where the type coercion comes in. If, if suddenly you have mixed data types and a vector, they'll all be coerced into the, the some kind of least common denominator. If you have a character, the characters are the least common denominators, which may be okay for you. It may cause you problems, um, um, but at least you're aware of it. Um, we've, we've looked a little bit about how to obtain data, particular elements from um, a vector by, by subsetting it. You can use logical expressions in that. We've looked at this funky operator, where, which is, um, uh, um, percentage and percentage, which can be really useful. 
incidentally, if you, you need to find help for, for these characters, you'd have to quote it. So you can do, uh, you'd have to do N. Uh, okay. Otherwise, I won't recognize it. And it's giving you a choice here, uh, probably volume matching. And it tells you a little bit. Similarly with the, the other funky characters in that. Um, what we're about to look at now is um, data frames, which is possibly the, 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 the data structure you will use most or nearly all of the time you use R. You may have to get into lists a little bit later on, but we're not covering that here. Um, now, time is kind of short. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is I, 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 I may skip over some sections. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm skipping. Um, what I really want to get to is the graphing. So we've not got to the graphing. That's, that's a major bad on my part. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I'm, I'm going to skip this section. I'll tell you what it is. If we have time at the end of the graphing section, I'll come back to it and we'll cover it again. Otherwise, you can read about it in the notes uh, later on. I, I, but we'll see how we get on. So, so the last thing we did um, before we had the lunch break was to download the, this file, okay? So if, if you go to your files tab and if you click on data raw, you should have a, a portals uh, data join CSV file. If you don't have that file there, um, please put a red um, cross on it, uh, oh, sorry, on the nonverbal indicators and uh, let's see if we can sort it out. Otherwise, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and read that data. See if you've downloaded it. The data you've downloaded is exactly the same data you're looking at yesterday uh, in the um, open and find example. So it's, it's a survey of animal species, uh, I think over a 20 year period um, uh, from uh, I think California, I think it is. Um, so, um, so we're gonna read the data. Um, and the way we're going to read the data is um, we're going to we're going to create a variable surveys, and into that data we're going to read a CSV file. So it's read dot CSV. Now the CSV file by default assumes that the separator is going to be commas. Um, you can actually use other uh, separators. You can use tabs and you can use um, semicolons. I think because in Euro in mainland Europe, um, the the comma is used as a as a, a separator between the fractional part of a number and I, uh, basically what is a dot is used for in the UK. Uh, they tend to use semicolons to separate values as opposed to colon commas. Um, so if you if you read uh, .csv2, you can explicitly indicate what separator is being used. And there's another one called read table. <coughs> so uh, you can, for, I've typed read csv and it's given me a choice of read csv and read csv2. Um, um, so here you can actually, for read csv and the tool tip, you can actually see what's expected. Uh, it's a file, the file name, okay, we're going to give that in a second. The header, the, the, all of these other ones are optional ones. The header is true, so it's expecting to see a header. The separator in this instance by default is a, a comma, the quote character. <clears throat> so if, if your data has embedded commas, you may wish to uh, quote values. So it's just gonna use a double quote. Uh, I think that can probably a decimal point. I'm not sure what well does, I'd have to read the documentation. And then there's a special common character. But and we're on the only thing we're going to require at this instance is we're going to read it from where we put it. So we're going to put quotes and we're going to specify the directory data uh, raw. And the file is called portal underscore data underscore joined dot CSV. Okay. So uh, once you've typed that, if you to uh, end the line, command enter or control enter. And it can't open the file, no such file. I wonder why. Data roll, oh, I can't Yep, thank you. I can't spell by typing again. 
command enter. Okay, so let's write it. <coughs> so I can uh, just try class. Just oh, let's do it here. Class surveys. Just oh, I can't spell again. Surveys just to see what 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 it thinks it is, and it it, it looks at it as being as a data frame. Um, so that, that's what we expect, and that, we'll talk a little bit more about data frames. Incidentally, if you do type of surveys, and I always find this a little bit confusing, so you've got all of these different uh, functions to query the operators, I mean, the, 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 the value, the type of data, this one returns a list, which is, strictly speaking, is correct, um, because a list, uh, sorry, a data frame is a subtype of, of list. Uh, but um, but what I really want to know is just whether it's a data frame or not. And again, we'll do, um, um, we'll talk more about data frames as we go through this, this, this part of the lesson. <coughs> as an aside, what, what you could have done also, and again, it's possibly worth knowing, so I'm gonna create surveys two. I'm gonna assign that. I'm gonna do um, read.csv. Again, I'm going to specify a file, but this time instead of specifying for file, I'm going to copy the URL from the, the download file um, command. Okay, I'm going to copy that URL. I'm going to paste it into the read.csv file. And I'm going to command execute that. Uh, so control exit, control return, or control or command um, return. And that well, that's getting it directly from the source. So in principle, you did not actually have to download the file and read it back in. You could write it directly um, um, and it's exactly the same thing. Um, so if you want to view the data, you just have the variable name. Okay. So you can see uh, it's only showing me the first three columns because my font is so large. Uh, and it's, you've got 334,710 rows. Uh, possibly what's more um, useful in the beginning and the case, remember case is important here. Oh, let me do it upstairs. Um, if you do view surveys, it'll open up a new tab with the data Oh, sorry, it's views, not views. Oh. Right. Um, and I can't spell survey again. So setting myself up for a fall there. Surveys. Okay. Or oh, is it survey? Surveys. I put surveys. Okay. So if you execute that one, you get a new tab. With every, uh, they're only the read only, so you cannot modify the data, but you can quickly browse through the data. So you see, we've got a record ID, we've got a month, a day, a year, we've got a plot ID, the species, we've got a sex, which not all of the items are populated, hand foot length, and again you can see here what entries are NAs. Uh, I'm not sure why they're not NAs here. We'd well, have to go and look at the data, the raw data. Uh, Etc. Okay, so so you, it's a nicer way of actually um, viewing the data just for inspection. If you click on the the little cross here, you can get rid of it. We can inspect the file as well, so we can look at the top of the file. So the, there's another command if you if you're familiar with Unix. I mean, this will be familiar to you. Uh, if not, it's just called surveys, sorry, head of surveys, which I can't spell. Um, um, and that will show you the top of the, 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 the top six um, rows. And again, because my, my, my font is so large, it shows me only the first three columns, okay? You can specify, you can overrule a uh, head of surveys, and if you wanted the top 10, you can just say n equals 10. 
Nope, ten. Four is not. Oh, I can't, I can't spot surveys. I'm going to have a big problem. Surveys. Okay, so now show me the first ten, ten rows. Uh, I've, well, I, I can only see the first three columns, actually. No, yeah, because of the font size. Um, equally well, if you wanted to just have a look at the bottom of the file, um, you could do tail surveys. And again, by default, that will show you this, the, the, the bottom six lines of the survey. Okay, so you can see you're now at row 34,786. Uh, and you go up to 37,481. And again, you can override how many you view. So that can be useful for inspecting your data. Uh, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, you, you've seen this command there, but it's a little bit, um, um, oh, actually, the other place to look at is your environment. Um, so the surveys, where is it? It's alphabetical order. No, it's a bit at the top. I'm sorry, it's not alphabetical. It's okay. Yeah. So again, you've got surveys here. Um, you can, you, if you click on the, the little um, open thing, you'll actually see that the structure. And this time, you, because you've got too much data, um, um, it's actually only showing you the first one, two, three, four, five, six, six elements, and then dot, 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 dot. And you can actually have a look. And it's telling you the data type is uh, right at end as so it's integer, integer, integer. Integer, 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 character, character, etc. And I think if you click, if you click on the element itself, you get the view command operating. So it opens up a tab with all the data in it. Okay. So so that's useful to inspect the data again. So you can um, in a similar fashion, um, you can you can use the structure command str on surveys. Okay, so, so in a similar fashion, you can, it's giving you that the column identifiers, is you've got a record ID, you've got a month. Um, and again, remember that what a data frame is, is a collection of vectors, uh, all of the same length. So every, every, so you end up with a square array. I think of an of a Excel spreadsheet, think of a, a, NIST, a database table, um, I think in, um, what do you call it, in, in Python, they call them data frames if you use the, the appropriate model. And so so it's basically a bunch of vectors collected together. And remember that vector has to be of the same time. So every column has to have the same data type. Okay. So so this time, because the columns, the, the, the length of the, the, the vectors are so long, you're having the dot, 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 and you're getting a sample of the data. You can, there's another function that you haven't seen up to this point, which is a summary of um, the data. So you can get a quick introspection of the data. So this will return uh, averages, if it involves a numerical, medians, et cetera. Um, so summary of surveys. And if you type uh, control, uh, control enter or command enter, okay. Um, so here you can, for, for each column, you get some information. So for instance, for the record ID, not incredibly useful because it's just an identifier. You get what the minimum value is one, what the first quartile is, what the, I mean, 25% you know, data. Um, that's the median, so where the middle of the data is, the mean, uh, the third quartile, and what the maximum of the data is. So for the record ID, not so useful. For a month, uh, not, not so useful either. For day, not so useful for year. Uh, the minimum and the maximum is useful in terms of determining the extent of your data. Um, plot ID is not so useful. And then for, for the um, categorical data, i.e., the, the, the stuff that is, um, um, what do you call it, um, um, character based, or um, you, you're getting some minimal information. It's telling you the character and what the length of the. the the, 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 um, the column is, is. 
So you, you sometimes it's useful for things. I mean, for weight, it'll make sense. For other columns, it will not make sense, etc. But you can get a quick uh, view of what the data is. Other stuff that you can get about your um, your data frame, you can find out how, what the extent of it is. So if you type them for dimensions of surveys. Uh, Oh, sorry, service again, problem with spelling. Okay, it's telling you uh, it's composed of 34,786 rows and 13 columns. Incidentally, so this is this is another vector. So you could dereference that as well. So you can type dim uh, surveys. Ah. So one to, to dereference the first element which is the number of rows so if i execute that you could get three. and then you could also do for the second element okay oh and something i've not caught before so, so if you try to be greedy and you try to get a third element you should get an NA because there is no such element okay so if you go beyond the extent of the array you don't necessarily have to to remember, remember all that because there are specific um, functions to return the number of rows which is n row I always get that confused as n row or n rows as n row surveys so you don't have to dereference the first element with the square bracket one. And that returns that as three, four, seven, eight, six. I know it's useful to remember because you may need that. Um, in a similar fashion, n call will return the number of columns. So how many columns do you have in your, in your data frame? You got 13. So it's exactly the same information you were getting before. Other interesting stuff is you can find out the names of the columns. Okay. Oh, and you can find um, the row names. Row names in this particular instance is not much use because it's just a number. Okay, so it's giving you that which um, a number between one and 35,000, whatever it is, surveys. Okay, so that's not, oh, oh okay, it's only giving you the first thousand and there's uh, another 33,000 to go. So in this particular instance, the row names is not a useful category. Uh, sometimes you, you have explicit names, in which case you may want to know what it is. So incidentally, remember that the names of surveys is just a vector. Um, so you can obtain one of the values if you wanted the year. can put a four and that returns a year. So that's useful to know that if you want to rename your year, you want to call it, I'm not going to execute this, so um, don't execute it either. If you wanted to call it something else, if you want to call it um, anus for the Latin for year because you're so sophisticated, um, if you type that then you'd overwrite the existing column name and then you'd be typing it as something else. I, I put a comment in front of that because I don't want to execute that. But it's showing you that these functions that are returning um, the names can also uh, be used to overwrite existing names, which is something useful to know. Okay, so here we have a challenge now. Yeah. So based, so let, 
Well, well, I don't think it's a major one. So, so I'll give you a minute per uh, sub question. Okay, based on the output of STR surveys, can you answer the following? What is the classic class of the object surveys? How many rows and how many columns does this object have? And how many species have been recorded during these surveys? I'm not sure about the last one. Okay, so I'll give you I'll give you three minutes. Um, to try and try that out and see whether you can um, get that. Then we'll then we'll deal with it. Yeah, go go for it. So again, if you, if you finish, just type in um, put in your number of indicated saying that you've you've done it. The first two are relatively easy. The third one, I'm not actually sure how you get that from SDR, but uh, so if somebody can solve that, that would be fantastic. And I think I know how to do it in, using another mechanism, but. Okay, so let's let's quickly do this. So if I if I type str surveys, if I look at the very top, okay. So the first question: what what is the class of the object surveys? Well, it's actually telling me it's a, it's a data frame. So, so that bit is fairly straightforward to answer. Um, how many rows and how many columns are there in this object? Well, you've got 34,786 um, objects, observations rather. And so that's the number of rows of 13 variables. And then it's saying how many species are recorded during these surveys? So that to me from this is not clear. Does anybody have an answer to that? Um, I think it might be assuming that survey as uh, or species was imported as a factor. Oh, 
Yeah, which I mean, I can't can deal with that. So you what you find the number of levels, but by, they they don't know that. So that's. I mean, the other way, I think there's a unique. I think unique. Yeah, there's a unique thing, but then you don't know how to dereference surveys. So so that's a bit of an unfair question, because um, you can do. I'll show you one of the ways. We'll cover this later on. Uh, oh, sorry. Let me put it up here. But I mean, I, this is assuming. So I'm not sure how you get that from. Oh, I see what you mean. I, I understand that. Okay. So what used to be the case that whenever you read in data um, into a data frame, if it found any character um, columns, it would automatically import them as a factor. And again, we've not covered factors yet. Uh, but what a factor is, is basically it's, for, it's meant for categorical data and then you it gives you the number of unique elements in that. And then the, the, instead of having the values, it tells you in that set of unique values, where does the, which of those unique values does does that the, 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 the element correspond to? So suppose you had a mouse, a cat and dog as, as you see unique characters. Um, so the first, if the first one was a, was a, like I said, a mouse, cat and dog, first one was a mouse, right? Instead of putting mouse there, we put one, as in it's the first element in your categorical list and then a set of unique values so that you put a one in, in the, as the index and that's pointing to the first element in your category, which is mouse. If you had, um, I, I can't remember what dog say was the second element, and you had a dog there, instead of having a dog there, you'd have a two because there's a second element in unique values. So that would tell you the, um, how many unique observations you actually had. As of R4.0, which is what we're using now, uh, strings, character arrays are read as character arrays are not converted into factors. Um, um, so this is why you can't see that. And you, yeah, so it's, Peter's right. You you would have been able to see that easily from your STR if it was a factor. Um, in fact, let me show you. In fact, but so if I make a factor, and again, you don't know how to derive this. Is just, okay. So surveys. The way that you dereference a column, one of the many ways that you can do dereference a column is to use a, a, a dollar and then the name of the column, which in this case is surveys. Oh, sorry, um, species is what I meant to type. Okay. Um, was it species I was supposed to find out? Anyway, for species, you have 40 levels. So I've got 40 unique values and it tells me what the unique values are. It wasn't, yeah. So in this case, you have 40 species. It's funny, it says 48 in the answer, but anyway. So this is why you can't see it. Um, you can read in your data as, um, Factors, I mean, as yeah, as factors still. If there's time, we'll cover factors later on. If you do um, the help for read CSV, let me bring it up. Um, okay, so if you if you go through all this stuff, there's this thing here. Okay, so this fact you can specify it read strings as factors so that it will convert anything that's a character into a factor. Um, um, and the default for that used to be true. Um, but as, as from R4.0, it's now the, the default is false, um, Mario, which I think is, yep. Um, it, it, it's not, it's, it's not 4.0. It's the fact that read underscore CSV is coming from tidyverse, read dot CSV comes from base R. And but, 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 but the CSV doesn't have these options for string as factors. Oh, I thought, I thought, you, no, I, thought yeah, I think you can still use that. 
I think you can still use it because I, I, I used to find this incredibly annoying. So whenever I used to read CSV, and I did use read CSV, um, it, it does have string as factors. I mean, you've got the little dots there. Um, you can actually use this flag in read.csv. We can well, we can we can check, but, but I'll do that in the break. Um, so 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 the, the whole point of this is this is why it's really you can't really do this easily from the, the state of play. The, the, the default behavior in R 4.0 did actually change. It used to read them as, as factors. Look, if this time we'll cover factors, but that's one of the sections I was going to skip and come back to. Um, um, anyway, so but basically you don't know enough to do to, to, um, the third part of that. Hopefully by the end of this um, session, you will know enough. Right, so so we, we, we know how to, let me move on. We know how to um, de, um, get the values from a vector. Uh, it's very similar in um, in, our, in our data frame, except you're now dealing with two dimensions. Okay, so use the square brackets. So um, surveys, one comma one, Oh, come on, come on, one will return. Oh, oh gosh. If you execute that, we'll return the best first, first value and column one of rule one. Uh, and just to check, we can do view survey. Is it? Oh, okay. So the, the, the first rule, uh, first column. Uh, is one, and this is indeed what is being returned. Uh, we can do the first column out of this, and the sixth row. So surveys one comma six, and the value is NL. We can check. Go to surveys. Row one and the six element, one, two, three, four, five, six, is indeed NL, okay? So, so that's how you're dereferencing um, um, columns, sorry, values. You can do some of things with, um, um, if you want to return a whole column. Um, so here you, you say surveys, you miss out the first value because you want to return all the elements in the first column as a vector, or oh, I'm getting confused now. Um, so, okay, so that's 172224. So I'm saying that's column one. So Okay, that's row and that's column. Um, and so so column. So so basically all the all the elements in the rows and one seven two 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 four two two six six. So you are getting column one. So that's saying give me all the elements in the rows of column one. So that's one of the ways you can do it. Um and you can check that you're returning a vector. Which if, if this is a vector, it'll just return the, the data type of that column. Surveys. And it should just be, I think it's says integers. Yeah. It does. Is anybody confused? Oh. Okay, I assume that's a no. Um, um, you can also return surveys. Oops, ah, the first column in a slightly different way. Surveys, but just saying, give me column one without the comma. Okay, and that. Returns. If we can go to the top of it, we'll check. 
Okay, so I, I'm missing the first element, but 72 to 4, 2, 6, 6. But it's a difference. It looks different because it's, the other one returned it as, as a set of elements going horizontally uh, because it was returning as a vector. This will return it as a different type of data. If you do class of surveys one, it's returning it as a data frame, okay? So the first one returned it as a vector, so you saw it spelled out horizontally, and this is returning it as a data frame. You may care about this if you're trying to use this in, in other mechanisms. So if you want to put um, data into, um, into a function that requires you to have a data frame, you dereference it this way. If you required to dereference it as a vector, um, you do it using the comma one. Again, it's possibly not detail that you need to worry about just now, but it's keeping it in the back of your head. Okay. So we've some another way of dereferencing elements, and we've seen this in the past. We saw this. Sorry, yeah, going, you, yeah. just a quick question. When yeah, I scroll sure. all the way up to in, in the console, um, it show it, when it shows the data frame, it starts from um, oh no, sorry. I think it uh, I was it just shows from line five or four down, but it's apparently like cutting off whatever like visually I can see. It. Yeah, it's just truncating it. I mean, if if you want to see, it, excuse me, if you want to just see the top, you can put head of surveys one, and then that will show you only the first six columns. Okay. As, as, oh, hold on. What did I do? I can't spell service again. <laughs> yeah, it works here. Yeah, so, so, so that would um, allow you to check. It's just, it's just there's too much information and uh, it's just overwriting the character buffer. I mean, you've got 34,000 elements. And, and this can only work for a column, right? It doesn't work for row. What doesn't, sorry? So when you say um, the data, uh, when I put number one, it only shows, oh, sorry, it shows the raw data. Um, so when you when you just put one inside the bracket, only one as it is, yeah. Yeah. does it just show column data? Yeah, it's, 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 it, you're dereferencing, you're obtaining the whole column, okay? which is the same as this one, but the data types that it returns it as is different. And here it's returning as a vector, I the actual individual elements in the, in the data frame. And here it's returning it as a smaller data frame. Okay. Okay. I, again, I think it, it's something you don't, it's, so this is the kind of detail you possibly don't have to worry about just now, just keep something in the back of your head. Um, 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 it's, it's worth being aware of, um, but, but um, yeah. Um, you saw this, this uh, functionality before, one to 10, which are, it, it just returns a, a set of um, integers. I think they're integers, or they might be just numeric, it's called numeric values from one to 10. It can go the other way around as well, 10 to one, okay. So it's, it's, it's going backwards. Um, so you can use that kind of um, data, sorry, that, that, that kind of uh, notation um, to return a set of contiguous columns. So surveys one, two, three. So the first three rows, so that's going to be replaced by one, two, three. Um, of um, column six. So it's going to return the first three rows of column six and it's NL, NL, NL. Again, you can check. So the first three rows of column six, NL, 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 okay? So it's another way of dereferencing um, stuff. If you wanted discontiguous stuff, if you wanted to, to, to um, get information, you could use surveys um, 
Okay. Uh, if you do comma, C, and then again, it doesn't matter, one, three, five. Okay, so that's going to return columns one, three, and five, and it's going to return that as, a, as vectors. So, um, oh, what's that a data frame? Uh, I think it's, well, I guess we can find. That looks like a data frame, but let me check class. Oh, let's type it surveys. One, five. That's interesting. It's sending it as that's being returned as data frame. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about that. Equally well, uh, if you just wanted to remove one column from from the thing that's been returned, instead of having to type in, you know, all the columns you want to keep, you can say which columns you want to exclude. So you can say surveys. Give me all the columns except for column one. And the way that you indicate uh, that you don't want column one is you give it a minus value. So this is going to return the whole data frame except for column one. And you can see that the, the rows label is no longer there, uh, but you've got all the other columns being returned. In a similar fashion, you can, you can duplicate, uh, you can do the same um, type of um, output as you did with the head command, which only returns the first six rows can say, give me all of the data except for um, columns 7 to 35. So actually, you can use end row here. So if you say end row of surveys, that's going to be the last, uh, the last row. And then you put a comma to indicate that you want the, the rows without specifying anything else. So here you're saying, give me this other service. I'm going to ignore all the call, all the rows rather, and the start off with seven, and then that go to colon, um, to to the the last row. And uh, I haven't spelled service correctly again. So this will return the first six rows, which is the same as head. Okay, so you get the first, first six rows, which is the same as head. Um, another way of dereferencing columns, um, if, if you're naming it, it's possibly better as long as your naming is consistent because you may change the order, you may add a new, um, column, in which case if you specifically put your numbers in, that's going to kind of mess your um, output. You can give it the name of the, the column. So you can say surveys and give it, instead of actually putting a numeric value, you can say, give me all of the column of species ID. No, oh, sorry, underscore ID. And that's going to give you that specific column, so you don't have to know what number, uh, what name it is. Sorry, what 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 number it is in, in in the terms of the columns. So if you run that, it returns it. Remember, if you can't remember the names of your array uh, of your data frame, rather, remember just use names, surveys, and this always happens to me. I can't remember the name of my my data frames. You can just quickly check. Uh, what the, the names of the, the frames. Um, and this, or let's, let's check as well. Class, surveys, species, ID. And I believe this returns it as a data frame. There you go. It returns it as a data frame. 
if you wanted a vector again, <laughs> so base in a similar fashion, you could use comma, oops, comma, and use the name of uh, the column service ID. Oh. Species ID. Sorry? Species ID. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, and that's been returned as a vector. There is another piece of um, notation that, that you, you may see, which is return, it will return the values. I think this is possible, but it can seem a bit odd. Instead of having a single square bracket, you have a nested square bracket. And that's it's saying, return the data as a vector of the, the specific data type. And again, here you can specify either a number or the column name, species ID. So that's returning as a vector of the, the particular data type. So in this case, it'd be a character. It's a string. The final uh, way of, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, which is the one I use, um, and I think I, I, most people seem to use it, if you surveys dollar, which I mentioned before, and it, they immediately recognize it as a data frame, and it's telling you what the different columns are, so you don't even have to remember. So you can just click on the one that it corresponds to, species ID. So I've shown you multiple ways of dereferencing uh, data frames. This is the way I would actually use um, to dereference, uh, to, to get the values of species ID. It returns the data as a, as a vector. Okay, so, so, I, um, so again, we've got this data frame and all we've done at the moment is how to take things out of that data frame columns. Uh, and you can return these columns as a data frame as a vector. For the time being, it doesn't matter. It's just pick one of the ways to, to actually dereference your data frame. If I were you, I would use that. Um, at least that's the easiest one to remember. Um, um, the names of the surveys is quite useful and the um, and, and call, for, sorry, and row for the number of rows. Uh, it's also very useful to remember. So I, th those should be my, my take home messages for you um, just now. So here's another challenge. I'll give you five uh, five minutes um, and then, um, okay, you should have that. There we go. So, so I'll give you five minutes and see how far you get. Um, and then, well, I'll, 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 I'll do it. Um, so I'll give you five minutes. Starting from now, I bring the timer across in a second. There you go. So have a go at, at those four. And again, if you have a question, this is another opportunity for you just to ask. Um, just, just about the um, uh, this uh, comment, um, uh, Mario. You said surveys uh, bracket minus parenthesis uh, seven, and then n row surveys. Um, whenever I'm running it, it just gives me an error. It just says object surveys not found. Um, and I checked this um, spelling, but it's correct. Okay, so so when you type surveys square bracket minus open brown bracket seven etc., it it says surveys not found. I mean, what's exact error? Yeah, yeah, it just says survey um, error object uh, surveys not found. But I then run surveys, it does work. Yes, so what are you doing wrong? Shall I screen, share my screen? Uh, 
Are you uh, a host? Uh, yeah, yeah, if you can, I don't know if you can, but... Um, no, I cannot share, unfortunately. I need to make you a... Uh, hold on, see if I can make you a co-host. Okay, I'm not sure how to make you... Alex, are you there? I am, yes. I just had my video off. Oh, can you make? I can't make uh, Ali a co-host. Let me have a look. Oh, at least I don't know how to do it. Is that Ali? Ali, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me just uh, make co-host. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, so um, here this is, it just, no, uh, yeah. whenever, I'm, oh, whenever yeah. I'm running it, it just gives me error. And then when I run surveys, it, it works. Oh, yes, Is that capsulized? Uh, no. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Lucy, oh. cup. Yeah, sorry. I, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So 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 remember that R is case sensitive. So so that's I guess that's an important take home message. Yeah? So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let me let me go through the the answers to this. So it says create a data frame survey two hundred containing only the data and row two hundred of the data set. Only the row and data two hundred. Okay. So so it's telling us to create a surveys. 200 data frame. It would help if I could spell. Okay, and then we're gonna from that we're gonna assign it the data from only the row 200. So we got surveys. And we only want row 200. Um, at, is it that way? Yeah, I think it's that way. Okay, so that covers that one. If anybody had any special difficulties just uh, about, about, about doing something, you don't quite see what I've lost. The... Oh, gosh, where am I? I'm going the wrong way. Oh, 
Okay, here we go. Okay. That's good. Fine. Okay, so we're told that n rows gives you the number of rows. Use n row to pull the, the last row. You just want the last row. Well, you can do the same kind of thing as you did before. Um, so you can say surveys bracket, but you want only the last row. So you say in row surveys, and then you put a comma after that. Put a space there. Okay, and that's returning only the last row. Surveys and uh, same mistake all the time. Surveys. Okay. So it says check that a tail gives you the same result. We're just going to return the last six rows. So we say tail surveys. We only want the last row, so comma one. And hopefully that'll be the same as the previous one. It seems okay. Uh, pull out the last row using n row instead of the row number. Oh, oh I've already, sorry, I, I, I kind of, okay. I, I did that one there. I, I should have explicitly put 30,986 there. So that's already done. Create a new data frame from the server last from the last row. Wow. Okay, let's do that just for the sake of doing it. Surveys last. I'm going to pull in the, the last row. Surveys square bracket and row number of surveys. Last row surveys and then comma. Okay, so n row is determining how many rows you have, which effectively is the last row because you're counting from one. Uh, and then the comma says, return everything in that row to me. Okay, you can now want a surveys middle. This is slightly more complicated because it depends on whether you have even or odd uh, rows, but we'll, we'll assume that you've got an even number of rows from there. Um, you could do the, the slightly more sophisticated, but um, let's keep it short. So you can do survey, do you want the middle? Surveys, middle. And again, we're going to use exactly the same mechanism. We're going to say surveys. Risk. So we want the middle row, so that's N row surveys divided by two. Because this is going to go badly go along if you have a, an odd number of things. Oh gosh, I can't spell. Why does not give me a row? Oh, um, we've done this before. So you want to use a negative notation to reproduce the behavior of head surveys. Um, I've actually done this, so um, fine. So we're going to do surveys. So I preempted things. So we only want, we want to exclude all the values from seven until n row surveys and then comma and that should give you the the first six elements because you're excluding rows seven to the end of the, the data frame and that's giving you the first six elements there are there any questions
What time is it? Two thirty, three thirty. Okay. Despite having fighters is something that I want to leave just now. So so if we manage to finish the GG plot and somebody say to me, oh, but you need to cover factors. I'll cover factors before uh, RSQL light if we have time. But I think I want to miss out factors just now in order to get to the plotting because the plotting is possibly the most interesting part. So I'm, I'm going to uh, skip factors for now. And at this time, we'll come back to that. So please, somebody remind me. Um, so what I said to you before, factors are for categorical data and what you tend to have is a set of levels, which is how many actual unique values you have within that. And, and, and then it's what, you, you, the, 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 um, what you're actually storing is the, the, the index of the unique values. So if you have cow dog, um, I don't know, cow, cow dog, cat, cow, dog, cat, then instead of storing the actual cow value, it says what index of that unique set of values that you actually have. I'll come back to it if there's enough time. Please remind me to do so. So I'm going to miss out factors. So, uh, so that would, so if you scroll down. Oh, where are we? Okay. Um, I'm trying, I need to figure out where we oh for dates. So date I think dates are more important, so I'll cover dates, but I'll need to find out where the where is it the date challenge? Pipe says part of deployer. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll just put it here just now because I'll, I'll line three six two for me roughly. I don't know if that's the right place, but so what I want to do is dates, uh, formatting dates. So I, as you as you saw yesterday, dates can be particularly problematical in spreadsheets. Um, uh, you can also be well, open if I can help you. Uh, and this is how you deal with um, dates and, um, and, and, and R, which again can be problematical. Um, so if you do STR or from surveys, let's look at the structure of it. What you have is, um, you've got some date information, but it's been split up, which is a sensible way of doing it. So you've got a month, you've got a day, and you have a year, okay? So we want to be able to recombine this in, into a particular kind of date format. Now, we're going to be using a library called Lubridate, which is included uh, whenever you upload, um, whenever you install Tidyverse, but it's not automatically loaded. So you have to actually load this package. So you're going to have to type library, library date. Okay. So this is um, uploading functions to deal with dates. In particular, we want a function called YND, uh, year, month, date. Um, um, so if you if you load library library date. Uh, it tells you it's attaching the package library date and it's telling you some, some information is being masked. Now for, for mask test, it, it means that the, 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 there are existing functions that are, um, the library date is gonna take over. Uh, if you wanted to call the old version of the, um, of the, of the, um, the, the data, oh, I think it's, it might be base, date. Okay, so, so you'd have to explicitly give the, 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 
the package name, in this case it's base, so you do package and double colon date, and then that returns the, the original specification of the, the base package of the date function. Otherwise, you'd be using the library date uh, version of date. Um, so the function we're interested with in Lubricate is called YMD. So, oh gosh, oh, go back here. So if you do question mark YMD, okay, so again, the help for it. Bring it up, okay. So here's YMD, um, there's a number of operations. You've got quiet, uh, false, so it's gonna complain, right? Uh, if you wanted to not to complain, you say quiet equals true. TZ time zone, locale, um, it's, it's wherever your local locale is, and truncate is zero. I'm not sure what it does. And there's a number of other functions. So, so YMD expects a year, month, date. And then you've got year, day, month, month, day, year, et cetera. And you've got different functions that will convert your data into an actual date type within uh, R. And once the R knows you've got dates and knows how to perform specific um, uh, bits of um, arithmetic on it. So, so, so we give it YMD and we give it a specific date. So we can say, um, oh, sorry, quote, 2015 0101. Okay, so, so it's expecting that kind of format. Um, it returns what appears to be a string, but it's, it is a date, okay? So instead of actually doing that, let's assign that to a variable, to my date. Oh, okay, my underscore date. Uh, and then we're just gonna assign the value of uh, YMD. And we again give it the same date. 20, oh gosh, quote, 2015, sorry, dash 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so we assigned it to, um, to a variable and we can expect that variable, let's see what type it is, str my underscore date, right? So now it, it understands, so it's, uh, STI is giving us a structure of type date. And it, so I guess I, I, this is, it understands it as a date and it's giving you the format of that specific date. Now, um, so, Unfortunately, within the, the data that we have in the data frame, you can see that the year, the month, and the day are separated, okay? So there is a, another function in R called paste. And what that is gonna do is gonna string things together. And then you can say, okay, so give it, let's give it the, 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 the information separately, 2015, zero, 01. Zero, 01. So by default, if you paste that, so if you run that, okay, it'll, it'll join all of the things together and use a space as a separator. So that's not quite right. So again, if you do 2015, quote, oh, sure, quote, zero, 01. You can actually explicitly specify what the separator is going to be. So if you include this, the separator by default is a space, but you can say, let's override that. And I want to separate things with a dash. So now when you run that, okay, what it returns is the string in the format that you actually want, 2015. Zero one zero one. Okay, so that, that's looking positive. So now we can put all of that together and convert the data that we actually have into 
I did. So, so let's take paste. And this time we're going to take the surveys. Okay, so I need to spell surveys. I'm going to use the, the, the dollar notation. I'm going to take the year. Surveys dollar. I'm going to take the month. And then surveys. I'm going to take the day. I'm going to put the separator equals to a dash. Okay, so what that's going to do is going to concatenate all of that, all of the columns into the right format. So it's going to do a concatenation row by row. So if I run this, I should get a whole bunch of dates, which is indeed what I get. So the fact that it's not 0, 4, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, if I wanted to fix that, it'd become much more complicated. Um, so now um, we can finally pipe all of that YMD. So save yourself the typing. Just copy and, copy, copy and paste the line above, right? Which is what I'm going to do. Um, if we copy that line from the previous that you just done and put it in the YMD. Okay, so, so and if you run that, okay, so it's, it's returning the dates. Now note there's 129 dates that I failed to pass. Let's ignore that for now and we will come back to it. The final thing that we want to do is we want to, we spent all this time doing this work, so we want to put this back into our data frame. We want to create a new column uh, with a date, okay? So we can say, let's create a new column. So we're going to specify surveys dollar date. So this column as yet does not exist, okay? So this is going to be, you're going to create a new column and it's going to be given the name date. And again, uh, uh, um, instead of typing all of what you just type over again, if you copy paste the line with the YMD from the, the, the line above, okay, you will have actually um, created um, um, a new column. You can check by looking at the names of the columns. So, so you just, of, the, of your sorry, of your data frame, names, surveys, okay. So now you see instead of having um, 13 uh, columns, you've got 14 columns and the date is, is the one that you've actually put in, it's an entirely new column, okay, it's derived from existing data in the data frame, but it is of, of it contains a whole date, and we can check, check that is actually recognized as a date. Um, so we can put um, surveys for STR, surveys, date, okay. So it, it's showing you that you do have a column of uh, one to 34,786 dates, um, which is cool. Okay, so, so the final thing, so we have these missing dates. So finally, let's, let's, let's look up and see what was wrong with it. Um, so we're gonna, Again, pipe into several things that we did before. So we're going to say um, surveys bracket. Okay, so we're going to return all the all the all the column sorry all the values from the an A. An A from um, 
surveys. So whatever there's a, there's a, a, so I'm not using not, right? I'm using, I, I want you to return all the values for surveys. Um, the date is, is a null value. Okay. In itself, that would not be that much use. Uh, I don't want to return the whole row, but I do want to return specific values. Mainly, I want to return the year. the month and I want um, the day. So I want to find out what is wrong with this, this oh, these um, 130 or so elements that did not transcribe across to be a proper date. So something's not quite right and I want to inspect the data. You could assign this to another variable, but let's, let's just look at it. Let's eyeball it first. Okay, so, so we have all the values here. Um, um, okay, so, so this, this strange things here happening. Okay, so for instance, month nine is September and September has 30 days, but we've got 31 here. April has got 30 days and we've got a, a 31 here. So something is not right with these dates. The year 2000 may or may not be suspect. I mean, I, I can't remember what the, the values of, um, of the value ranges for the survey were, but all of these values that I have either got um, an April the, the 31st or September the 31st. So something has gone wrong. I mean, maybe somebody who was taking down the data got confused. Or maybe somebody was transcribing the, the data from the sheets into a computer, got confused. Now you have a decision to make is what you're going to do with this data. You can either throw it away uh, or you can uh, assume that it was the 30th of September. Um, or you can make some other assumption. So whatever assumption you, you make, um, um, you do not want to modify the original data because your assumption may turn out to be wrong. You may talk to one of the actual people that collected the data and say, no, no, yeah, you're right. Um, it's just a mistake. It should be the 30th or maybe it should be the 1st of October or, or maybe, I, I don't know. But you, basically you have to make some decision about the data and then decide what to do with it. You could just make all of these 31st into 30th and then, um, then redo the, the analysis, having modified the data, but don't modify the original data. Okay, so so um, that is something that you have to um, decide upon. Okay, uh, any questions? Fine. So we now have forty minutes before the next break. Okay, so, so now we're going to be, uh, I think, one of the coolest uh, things inside of us is a package called, well, other than ggplot, which we're going to cover after this one. And it's something called um, deployer. And deployer allows you to modify or inspect your data and, and do uh, analysis, um, which I think is one of the really coolest things. Uh, well, in order to do this, we're going to be uploading Tidyverse, and th this next bit is kind of critical. So, um, if you can, if you don't get this next bit, you want please put a red sticky on. So we're going to up, we're going to load the the, the Tidyverse package. So library Tidyverse, which has all the functionality that we want. So if you execute that you should be getting, uh, so it's uploading a whole bunch of packages as a ggplot2, tibbles, tidy r, reader, uh, power deploy. So, so the one we're gonna be using just now is called deployer. Um, tibbles are just another, it's, it's basically like data frames on steroids. So they've optimized 
um, data frames, but they kept backwards compatibility. So, so if you refer to people refer to tables, and they're really talking about a, a, a data frame on steroids. Uh, Tidy R has some cool uh, routines to um, modify your data. Um, Again, that's one of the sections I'm going to skip. Um, and again, if you have time, I'll cover factors and tidy up. Um, and the one that you really want to know about is ggplot and dplot. The, these two guys play really nicely together. In fact, they all play nicely together. This is all point of tidy bits. All of these different packages play really well together. Uh, again, it's telling you that, 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 that when you load this package up, it introduces uh, some conflicts or uh, it basically hides some of the existing functionality. Uh, so Lubridate, or well, you've already seen as, as hiding, well, actually, we didn't see this last thing, as hiding um, the, the, the routine of as this dev time. If you wanted to obtain the old version of as dev time, you just put base colon colon and similarly for the other packages. So th this is just warning you that it's, it's going to hide some of the existing functionality you may expect. Okay. So uh, I'm going to just show you the um, now, now we can do things. So it gives us a set of functionality that you can actually um, do some of the things you were doing before, but it's in a slightly more elegant way than than, than previously. So, so we saw before if you wanted to um, select um, columns within um, a surveys. So if you wanted um, three columns, so again, if you put comma, and you want oh no sorry, so it should be comma C. If you wanted um, the plot ID, if you wanted um, species ID, and if you wanted, um, um, we'll find one more one. wait. Okay, that, that way you can return the three columns, plot ID, species ID, weight. But, but what, what um, tidyverse, and in fact, let's, let's, let's call it what it really is. What you're really using just now is deployer. Okay, so what deployer gives you is this functionality so to select columns. So you can say select, and the data is gonna be surveys. And then you want the columns, you want plot ID, you want species ID, uh, and you want weight. Ah, wrong one, weight. No, stop it. Okay, so if you, if you execute this command, Oh gosh, so I can't spell service again. Okay, so that's effectively the same as this other notation. Okay, um, so it's, it's returning the, the columns plot ID, species ID, weight. Semantically, this is much more neat. Uh, you don't have to remember whether the comma goes at the front or at the end. Uh, you just don't have to put the C notation. So to me, this is much more elegant and it's a much better way of doing it. Um, and later on, you see it's even more powerful than this, but, but let, let's stick at that just now. In a similar fashion as you saw before, you can say, give me everything apart from, you can exclude columns, so surveys, I want everything except record ID and everything except for species ID. So again, this time you're telling it what to exclude and you want everything else. If you run that, I can't spell the surveys again. Okay, 
So it's giving you all of the other columns except for record ID from species ID. Uh, I think that's way more elegant. Um, so so that's, that's, that's good. You can also filter rows out, okay? So, so um, again, you can assign it to a different uh, value. I'm not going to bother, uh, but so you can, by filter, you're gonna filter rows. So select is operating on columns, filter is operating on rows. Um, and so we're gonna say, uh, what am I gonna say? Okay, I want surveys. I only want the data for the year equal to double equals for equal 1995. Okay, so uh, uh, it, uh, yeah, so it's all 1995. Um, um, you can combine results. Um, so you can say, um, okay, what I'm going to do. Let's say I'm going to create a weight five. So I'm going to assign a variable called weight five, and I'm going to filter uh, the service again. Uh, surveys, comma, and you went weight to be less than five. Oops. So again, all I'm doing is filtering. I'm taking all the rows. Give me all the rows where the weight is less than five. Okay. And then I'm going to operate on that data. Furthermore, uh, I'm going to take only three columns of that. So I'm going to um, select from weight five. And I only want um, the species ID. I want the the sex, and I want the weight. Okay, so now I can run that, and I'm only getting the weights of those animals that have less than five are uh, less than five grams. And the moment we return the species ID, the sex and the weight. So, so it's slightly awkward, uh, but I, 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 I think it's better than it would have been trying to do it using the old mechanisms. Uh, but I could also, I could nest that. So it, it would be a little bit neater if I did um, so instead of actually, I could put select. I'm going to filter from surveys. So the, the data is being piped directly from this one. Uh, weight less than five. And I'm going to select only the common, the, the species ID. The sex and the weight. So this is exactly the same comment as before. It's a little bit neater. I'm not creating a, a variable, but it's harder to read, okay? So if I execute that, hopefully it'll work and it'll return me exactly the same information. It's returning me the, the species ID, the sex and the weight from surveys only for those animals that have, have a weight less than five. So it, it's looking good, but there is an even more elegant way of doing this, okay? And, and this is this is where deeper really comes into its own. Um, instead of having to create oh, um, temporary variables or having to nest functions, um, you can pipe it from one function to the next function. So you're saying the output of this um, routine is gonna be the input for the next routine. So we can do this using something called, uh, well, it's a funny character, uh, surveys. And it's another one of these funny characters, um, which is um, an um, uh, percentage greater than percentage. And that's a piping symbol. Uh, now you can, 
in, in R Studio, there's a shortcut for that. If you press um, Control or Command, Shift and M all at the same time. So, well, sorry, if you're on a, on a Windows machine, it's Control, Shift and M. And if you're on a Mac, it's Command, Shift and M. Right, it, it will automatically produce the symbol. So you don't have to do three different keystrokes. So uh, Control, or oh, let me just paste that. Actually, I'll put it in my, where's the chat? So I'll put it in the chat. Okay, so using the pipe operator, that, that, if you use control or command, shift and M all at the same time, um, um, it will um, produce it for you automatically. And the, from my greet R package is the package that first introduced uh, the, the symbol to do this operation. So you can, what you're saying here is you're gonna take the, the surveys uh, um, 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 data frame and you're gonna pipe that into the next routine. And the next routine we're gonna do is we're gonna filter the weight, filter the weight, oops. to be less than five. And then we're gonna put pipe that output uh, to select. And we're gonna select only species ID. And we're gonna select um, sex. I'm gonna select weight. Okay, so you've got exactly the same thing. But, but to me, I mean, this kind of um, syntax is really, really elegant. So what you're saying is you're taking surveys and the output of service is gonna go into this filter operation. So before when you used filter, right, you explicitly had to tell it what, where the data was coming from, okay? Because you're using the piping notation, you don't have to explicitly put the, 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 where the, the, the data is coming from, it's coming from the pipe, okay? Um, and then that's going to filter all the rows uh, to, to have weight less than five. Um, and then once you've actually taken the input from that, done the filtering, then the output of that is piped onto the next routine, which is a select operator. And I, that's going into a species ID. Uh, and then, so you're doing a select, so you, you're operating on the columns. You're only going to produce uh, the output from the columns, species ID sex and weight. So, so, so doing this kind of thing becomes incredibly powerful. Um, um, so you can, you can put the stuff in a, in a variable um, afterwards. So instead of actually putting it to the, to the terminal, now I'm gonna show you two versions of this. Um, so surveys uh, for SML for small, and then you're gonna put the usual op, um, piping operator. And then instead of typing everything and just copy paste the last line. Okay. So now when you, you execute that, your uh, the output instead of going to the terminal is going into the service.sml. Uh, um, data frame, which you can subsequently use in other operations. Now, so having copied, if you copy paste, so you copy pasted that line, if you paste that line again, at the very beginning, I told you that there's another way of actually doing the assignment and you can put the, the arrow pointing the other way. Surveys, SML for small. So these two things are exactly the same thing. So if you, if you look at the course notes, they, they tend to use this syntax. Um, I tend to use it, I don't know if I, uh, it's just me. Uh, I tend to use this other syntax because to me, there's a, there's a flow here that's operating from left to right, okay? So you're going from surveys to filter to select to an assignment. Uh, to me, this looks slightly odd in this fact you're starting from surveys, filter, 
and then select, and then you go back to the beginning again to put it into surveys. The, the two things are exactly equivalent, um, um, but um, to me, I, I, I prefer this syntax slightly because the rest is full going from left to right. The other one is breaking a bit. Um, up to you. Um, um, right. And I believe there's a challenge here if I can find the right place in the notes. Uh, okay, so so I may not be in the right place. So what am I looking for? And the, where's the oh here's a pipe challenge. Okay, it's, it's this one. Let's try this challenge. I, I don't know if I think it's the right one. Because here, um, um, here's a bit of stuff. So let's so let's try this this challenge here. So I think I may have picked the right thing. So to me, it's line 407, but otherwise, um, if you search for pipe, you should get, if you search for pipes challenge, um, you should get to the, the correct challenge. So I'm gonna give you five minutes to try this out. Has, has anybody got any questions? I mean, again, I say don't suffer in silence. If you, ha if you have a question, please. Uh, if you stopped understanding, then just stop me and say, I don't understand. Can you repeat and I'll repeat. In the notes, the, the challenge you're showing at the moment is in the factors section. Oh, okay. Okay, so, so, uh, but I'm, but I'm. Does this one, is this one, is this one there as well? The pipes oh, challenge. Yeah, that, that one's in a later section. I think that's the right one. Okay, so, so just, just do the pipes challenge. Oh, so that's all right. I, yeah, do, do the pipes challenge. Um, don't do the. So just do this one. And again, it's five minutes, so I have decided the clock. Have you finished before you stick your green sticky up? Actually, it should take you less than five minutes. But... So remember, filter operates on rows and um, select operates on columns. Sorry, somebody was going to ask something. Sorry, I'm having a problem. Yep. I'm trying to point out, I don't think my library loaded well. Um, I'm getting the, the error, which is a question mark, uh, IMD. IMD. Yes. So when you try to... When I, I put library tidyverse, uh, it doesn't work, I think. The library date work? Um, let me see. So when I enter, nothing happens and it gives me this question mark IMD. And I'm pretty sure I installed everything before, so. Okay, so, okay. Um, can, are you on, um, can you share your screen if, 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 if Alex makes you a host? Alex? I don't know how to make it. I, I don't think I've, I've got sufficient power. Let me, let me I've, made, I've made Robert the host. So who needs I, to I, be the host? I am host? the host now. Uh, it's, it's a Susan. I don't have the power. Susanna. Oh, you Susanna. don't have the power. Okay. Um, can you make Susanna a, a co-host, uh, Robert? Yes. Okay, so if I stop sharing, if you show me what you've got. 
Mm-hmm. Mario, how are you doing? How am I are doing? Tired? A little bit. Um, so basically, it's uh, um, I, oh, I only start having problems after uh, the library tidyverse. I get this error. That's not an error. That, that's you typing. Um, that's a help. So okay. To rem remove, hold on, remove that IMD. That's not. That's something you typed. Um, so remove that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now do an up arrow on that where you are. Press up arrow. No, Press, no, no. sorry. Up, up arrow on you. Uh, up arrow. Okay. Oh, well, I, I meant it in the console because in the console I'll run the. And yeah, there. there. Well, okay, I can't see what that is. You got up arrow in the console. Yep. Okay. And I'll, uh, yep. Do, Nothing. Do okay. It Oh, okay, it doesn't. What it is doesn't that? Work. What is that? What are you getting there? Like mm. we can't see that pop up. Uh, do you want to turn on sticky oh, key? No, forget it. No, no, okay, that's something else. <laughs> so it, it it doesn't okay. work. Yeah. Okay, no, no. On on the on the okay on the what do you call it on the on the the source pipe panel. Click at the end of the library tidy us and type control enter. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, already did. Yeah, no. So, so, so. That's, uh, yeah, no. It's fine. It's something. What should be happening? You're not. You're not getting an error, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're not getting uh, what you'd expect to see. Can you? Can you try library deploy? So, so type a new line. Sorry. New line. New line. New line. Yes. Okay. Type library again. Library. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then D P L Y R. D P D P no no E. D P. Yeah. L Y R. No L Y R. L Y R. Yeah, that one. Yep. D P R. Mm-hmm. Yep. So try enter. Yeah, nothing open. No, mm -hmm. but that might be okay. Can you can you do another new line? Mm-hmm. Type no. library. Yes. Uh, and gg plot two. Gg. Gg. Yeah. 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 Whole, yeah. That one. Yeah. Try return. Yeah. Okay. So can the the the, the stuff above what did surveys filter underscore five? Can you run that line? Yeah. This one. Yeah. Yep, run, run, run that. Yep. Error. Maybe there's a. Okay, wait, not find. Okay, so so. Can you type names surveys? Oops, sorry. Yeah. The wait is there. That works. Yeah, no, but but that's not that's not um. Mm -hmm. What's wait not find filter wait object wait not find. It's the pipe operators, I think. It, it's not finding the pipe operator. Can you go They're off just of that? Percent. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. You're right. Okay. Your pipe operators are wrong. It's, it's not. It's go go surveys. It's percent. Greater than percent, greater than so after the first percent. No, no, no. After between the two, put a greater than. Remove okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. So you, you got that. Okay. Yeah. And then on the other one as well. As well. Sorry. Yeah. I couldn't see. And then try again. Try again. Mm -hmm. Okay. It worked. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. I I think so. Type Control Shift M. All at the same time. Um, control. It's it's a keys. The keys are Control Shift and M. But after here, right? Uh, right. Just no. Just put it anywhere. Just now. I mean, I just want to see whether you can get it. Control Shift and M. All. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So instead of um. 
Whenever you're typing, one of the piping operators use Control Shift and M, and that will give you the right symbol. Okay, thank you. So it appears you're okay. Uh, you need to get rid of that one. I don't know what. Okay, this one. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Fine. So if you stop Thanks. sharing. I will stop now. Thank you. And then I'll start, and I'll start sharing. Um, Okay, so so let me quickly, what time is it? Okay, so we are, about, we are running out of time. I really do want to cover the, 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 the graphing. Um, so let me quickly go over this. So you want, ah, I've lost my voice. Okay, so we, we, we want surveys. And then if you type um, control shift M or command shift M, you get the, the little piping operator. So the first is that you want include animals collected before 1995. And then I can't remember the, the names of the columns. So there's a, you know, there's a year. So you want filter, you want stuff here before 1995, okay. Uh, and then you want to retain the so control shift M or command shift M. You want to retain the columns select. Ah. Uh, oh gosh. You want to keep year, sex, and weight. And I think that is it. Oops. Escape. Oh, let me. I'll show you something else before. Okay, so so th that should be. It's got um the the sex and everything. And it's got the year and it's got data before nineteen ninety five. Sometimes you will find that if you if you have something that's incomplete. So um, if I type Mario. And I forget to close the bracket. And if I type Control Return, Command Return, okay, you you will get this kind of funny. Um, I, I got a huge funny problem. Um, it's going to the very end of the. I was looking to close off the quote anyway. I wanted to do something else, but let me let me go back up. Uh, the problem is not. What line were we at, somebody? Roughly three hundred something. Oh, here we go. Okay, so so the the problem here is that because I've not finished the quote, well, in this case, it's gone right to the very end and to, to try and finish off the quote. But sometimes you get something that appears like this. You get this plus symbol. Um, um, so at this point, you have two choices. If it's not too complicated, you can close it off. So I could put a quote there, but not there. I could put a quote here and return one quote, not two. It's going to be further confused. Um, and, and then that would complete off the, the thing and it would allow me to finish it. But um, if you want to get out of this, because it's really hard to get out of um, unless you know what you're doing. And this, okay, it's not showing me. If you type escape, right, it will get out of that and you go back to the, 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 the usual prompt. Um, um, but but that can happen sometimes. Sometimes you can just finish it off based on missing quote or you're missing a variable. Uh, sometimes it's a real problem. So just step escape and it'll allow you to restart from, from scratch. Right. I want to, I want to talk a little bit about some um, other routines in Deployer. Um, what's that about? Eight minutes. So let me finish this next session. Then we'll take a possibly a smaller break. Uh, yeah, there's, some, there's quite a bit of other material I want to cover before um, we get to it. So, so we've covered select and filter. So select allows you to select columns, and filter allows you to select rows. Okay. So sometimes you want to create new columns. So you can do surveys, the pipe operator. So it says control shift M or command shift M. And we're going to mutate 
new tape. Okay, so that's going to create a new column. It's going to create a new column called weight in kilograms. And it's going to be the, the weight, the existing weight, which is in grams. I'm going to divide by a thousand to turn it into kilograms. Okay, so what again, this is introducing a new column into your data frame. Um, oh, sh sugar. Okay, so you can actually see it. Oh, we, it's uh, producing quite a lot of stuff. So let me pipe it into another thing called um, Control Shift M. Let's pipe it into head. So, so only the first 10, six, sorry, the first six um, columns are shown. Rows, five, six rows. So surveys is going into mutate. Mutate is creating a new column called weight and the, the sorry, weight in kilograms. And um, you can actually see that. Okay, it's where, where is it? Where is it? There it's, okay, okay. Not a great idea because there's a, there's a bunch of um, NAs. Okay, let, let's fix that. So before we run that, let's filter. And you want all the columns where uh, the weight is not any. So we're going to say, and we're going to pipe that to mutate. Control Shift M or Command Shift M. Okay, so I put an extra step. Um, you can separate, you don't have to put them all on the same line. Uh, but you need to, I think you need the last line to be the, the piping operator. So you can, you can separate it like that. Uh, being in on there. Okay, so, so now um, when I run that, okay, now it's making sense because I've removed all the all the rows that don't have any, which you may or may not want to do. But in this case, because I'm only showing the first um, six rows, if these are NAs, then you're going to get an NA for the weight in kilograms, which is not much use for demonstrating that the, 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 the thing has actually worked. Okay, so you can build up these chains of commands where the, 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 the input of one uh, can be the, sorry, the, yeah, the input of, of so the output of a particular um, commanding, in this case, the output is surveys, becomes the input to filter. Filter here is removing all the, 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 the weight values that have an NA in it, which is being piped into this mutate thing, which is introducing a new column, which again, then is being piped into head, which is only showing you the flex six, six rows. You can also use the, the output of one uh, mutate into um, to be the input for another one. So let's do surveys again. Ah, sorry, cancel surveys. Okay, so going again filter not as any. So again, we want to remove the weights, which are um, got an NA in them. I'm going to pipe that, not to that, so I'm being clumsy. I'm going to pipe that to mutate. So this is the time when you think, why am I got such long variable names? Weight and divided by a thousand, so that's the weight in kilograms. Um, then doom, 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 uh, we're gonna put another piping operator. Oh, we're gonna have another mutate. Weight and pounds. And that's gonna take the weight, well, we're gonna multiply two by 2.2 .2 and the weight and kilograms. And again, we're going to pipe that to head so we can we see something. Um, otherwise, you get, get flooded by output. Oh, sugar. No, that's a bit. Escape. Uh, I'm going to pipe that to head. So let's execute that. Okay. So now you have two new columns. 
you have uh, the weight in kilograms and you have the weight in pounds. Um, um, and you've seen that we the, the new column that was created in the previous step has been used to create the, the new column in the next step. So, so you're nesting all of these things uh, to be able to operate on stuff. Um, I'm going to miss out the challenge because I, I want to finish this, this bit off before we have the break, which we have two minutes, uh, not going to happen. Uh, so we can do surveys again. I'm going to pipe surveys. Oh gosh. I was, I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong key combination. Okay, I'm going to pipe surveys. This time we're going to use a new one. Um, we're going to group by, which is means that you're going to, whatever functions you operate, you perform on it, it's going to be done on, on a particular grouping of, uh, of the data that you have. So you're going to group by um, sex, okay? We're going to pipe that to the next variable. And we're going to summarize. Um, incidentally, um, something else I haven't said is that you can use either the, the American spelling or you can use the British spelling. So um, R was developed by New Zealand uh, and uh, they tend to use, I think they use British spelling. Um, um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I digress. So we're going to summarize, which is we're going to take um, we're going to create the mean weight for each sex. And that's going to be the mean of the weight. So it's going to separate it into two, the two separate sexes. Um, um, and remember, we've got a whole bunch of NAs. So we're going to remove the NAs. Na dot RM equals true. Um, what do I still want to do? And that's it. That's all. Oh, we're going to pipe it to your head as well. Otherwise, it's going to get too much input. Um, okay. So so now. Oh, okay, I've done something wrong. Oh, no, I don't know. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Um, so here we got three cases. We got some cases where the, the gender is not known, and that's shown that as a quote unquote quote quote. So that's why we don't have a gender, but we have values for them. Uh, for the females, we have an average weight of four point two, and for the males, we have an average weight of four four forty sorry forty two point two, and for males, we have forty three point three. We can actually go even further than that. We can um, group by uh, subgroupings. So we can do surveys, command shift M. Okay, we're gonna group by sex and we're also gonna group by um, species ID. So we've got two classes of um, aggregation here. Um, brim, brim. Um, and we're going to pipe that to uh, summarize. Right, and we're going to take the, again the mean weight is equal to mean of weight. Um, and we're going to remove, oops, any, any, oops. And we're going to do one for the piping. We're going to look at the bottom of the, the data which is tail. Uh, 
Okay, so if you execute that, so now we're taking the surveys, we're grouping by both the, the sex and the species ID, and we're taking the mean weight. And Okay, so you can have, again, in summarize, you can have more than one option. You could do mean weight, and then we have the mean, comma, uh, the, the maximum weight, you know, who's the heaviest one, uh, and the minimum weight. Uh, so you can have a series of elements being used to summarize. Okay, so here we've got the sex, we've got the species ID, so we've got all the males in this particular instance, I guess all the females will be slightly above that. Uh, and then you have the, the weight uh, for the particular subspecies oh, for each of the species. Um, what else can we do? Okay, so so something else we can we can we, we've done this before, but instead of having the NARM, we can have the surveys. Uh, instead of we can we can remove the 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 null values of the weight. Okay, so instead of having the NARM. Um, function, right? We can do this explicitly. Uh, we can have the group by again. Um, um, so we're going to sex and species ID. And then we're going to pipe that to summarize mean underscore weight is now just equal to the mean weight. Because we've already taken out the um, um, we've already taken out the, the null values, we don't actually have to explicitly put any RM uh, to be set to true. Okay, so slightly different um, um, Values there, but I'm not looking at the tail. Um, I, again, you're getting only the first ten values. Um, um, uh, the, the, there's 54 more rows that is actually showing you. If you wanted to explicitly include more, you could put, add another line. Oh, not that. So I'm eating into your break time. But I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fiat, as the Scots would say that. We're not going to cover the, the, the really interesting stuff. You can say print n equals 15. OK, so this time you're showing the first 15 values. So you can tell it explicitly how many values. So, do people want a break? Am I am I am I just hammering too much, or, or do people want us? us, us I'm going to have a slide. Let's have a let's have a ten minute break. Are people okay with a ten minute break? Otherwise, we're not going to ever be able to finish stuff. Or do people want me to continue going? Okay. If you want me to continue going, press a, a green tick. If you want a short break, press a, a red tick. Okay, two, two, want a break? Three, want a break? Four, want a break? Oh, okay, I think the, I think the breaks. So let's have a, a short break. Uh, and, then I, and then I'll briefly summarize. I've got a couple more things within that. So this is all deep plot I'm covering just now. Um, I, I will briefly summarize what we're doing with Deepa when we come back. And then um, I'll move on to the plotting and that, oh, we'll get started on the plotting. I don't think we'll finish it. So, that, so do you want, okay, here's a 10 minute break. Okay, 15, let's have a 15 minute break. So, so the first thing is, uh, yeah, I'm sorry that today is really a lot of material. Um, and if you're not from a programming environment, it just tends to um, be slightly overwhelming. Um, 
what might be a good idea for the future, Alex, is to to possibly split the R day into two half days. Um, I don't know if that's feasible in order to give people to to digest uh, and think about things in order to come back and and be slightly more rested as opposed to be hammered for the whole day. So what have uh, have R in two half days? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, give people the choice. Uh, I mean. Y yes, that would be possible. The only issue is that we are trying to cover modules in, in certain order. So you have the data organization step, then you have the data cleaning step, and then you have the data analysis step. So we are trying to cover these lessons in the order of how you would do things in real life. Yeah, but I mean, that, that doesn't detract from it. It's just, it's just a, it's a gap. No, um, so it's yeah, it's possible to split and then maybe do open refine at the end of at the end of day two, in the afternoon, and well, then no, start well, start no. R in the afternoon of day one. I was thinking of splitting it even more, like a, have, a, have I mean actually have white space between them. So so maybe do do the the spreadsheets and open refine. That's fine. I mean, um, and then have a half day of R and then another half day possibly. Yes, day. yeah, that's possible. I mean, I don't see why not. It's just. Uh, People's availabilities might yeah. differ. You need to set aside three days for this, basically. Well, no, so I mean, it's coming just... a bit more difficult to, to plan when you have to set. It's just two half days. I mean, well, anyway, people, if people think that's a yes, good idea, yeah. put it in the note uh, in the feedback at the end of the session. If you think it's a bad yeah. idea, so there will be a link a link to the to the post workshop survey as well, which is which is a feedback to the carpentries which we have access to as well. So yeah, please do feel free to put your ideas and suggestions of what would work better. So I have to say that in the past, loads of workshop formats have been experimented with five half days, three half days, and, and so on. And then in the end, the carpentry settled on um, two full days of workshops, but people modify that and, and um, do different formats so yeah why not so i mean for me i mean the the, the message is to take home i mean we haven't quite finished yet but um so so r is, is a kind of cool language i i mean i tend to be more of an r person than a, than a python person uh, i can read python more and dabble with it now and again but i i, I prefer r a little bit more r studio i think is a really great uh, development environment um the, the stuff that we cover today, I mean, the, the basic syntax you will have to cover at some point. Um, um, the, the data structures, I mean, how to um, access variables and vectors and the fact that there's this type of coercion and, and that happens in vectors is good to understand because it may suddenly happen that it, it happens to your data and you want to understand why that is happening. So, so, so being able to have some modical understanding of this type of coercion, the fact that um, it, um, uh, logicals get turned into uh, numerics, get turned into complex, get turned into uh, strings, and, and that kind of order, if you have mixed data types, is, is useful to know. Um, um, then you get into um, how to get into stuff in vectors, again, useful to know. The, the um, percentage in percentage operator for, for, for doing the, these string comparisons is also very useful to know. Um, so I think those are the things that are worth remembering. And then you, you run into data frames and, and the dereferencing, um, uh, i.e. accessing the variables. I mean, I, in terms of columns, um, access uh, to the easiest way for me and the way I tend to use it all the time is a, a data frame name, colon, and not colon, I, um, dollar column name is, is usually the, the most useful way. Incidentally, again, avoid spaces um, in your column names. If you have a, a column name with a space and you'd have to do data frame um, dollar quote name space name close quote. So avoiding um, that the um, embedded spaces is, is a good idea. In terms of um, the, the, the the accessing of, of the data and data frames, I think I would, other than the, the dollar thing, I, I would not remember the other stuff. I mean, if you need it, you can look it up. Um, um, 
deployer, which is what we've been doing up to this point, this way of actually piping your, your, your data frames into a filter, a select, a mutate uh, operation are, uh, are well worth knowing. Um, maybe I won't, I think there's, there's a couple more operations. The group by operation is really powerful as well. Um, the summarize operation to get a good idea of your data. There's also an arrange operation which allows you to sort the data. Um, um, but, um, and then you can count the variables. So, I mean, these are things that we could cover, but um, I am going to skip again um, in order to really take you to the, the ggplot stuff, which I think is a, is a, a combination of having ggplot with, with deployer um, and the ability to read in data frames in and out of your um, um, and, um, of our studio uh, is really powerful. We will have to, oh, so on this tidy R, um, tidy, tidy data, which allows you to, which I'm also going to skip. I mean, I think that's a little bit complicated for uh, for this kind of beginner's level. It allows you to map um, rows, the data in rows to be, become column names. And then it, it allows you to go the other way as well. If you have column names and then map them into rows and then have something else as a column. That is really um, powerful. And I have used it in the past in anger, but it is a little bit mind bending. Um, so so I, I don't know if I would actually have that in an in a elementary course. Before starting the GG plot though, um, we do have to um, modify the data a little bit and I'll show you how to write out the data into, um, um, into a, a, a file. So, so, so we're, we're going to cover that. So I am going to skip several steps in order to, to, to make uh, some progress with the, 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 the sexy bit of the whole course, which is ggplot. But before we finish, um, uh, um, so before we finish in deployer, I'm gonna, we're going to um, write the data out um, into a, a format which we're going to use subsequently within ggplot. It's also good to see how to write data out. Uh, okay, so I have no idea where we are now. Um, so we, I'm going to skip all that. Um, skip all that. So where do, where's the ggplot stuff? Okay, I think this is ggplot here. Okay, I think this is about. Okay, so actually, if you get go to um, the the line, uh, shall we do this? Let, let's let me, let me yeah. Let's so you don't have to type. If you go to around five three four, and, and but what you're looking for are these lines here with service complete surveys piped into filter. So basically what you're doing, you're taking some, you're filtering some of the data out. Um, um, if you find those lines, if you type command shift uh, C or control shift C, it'll take out the, 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 um, the comments. And so the, the first, if you have, actually, that, can everybody find these lines? Are, are they commented? I, I just, I'm commenting them. Um, I'm going to clear that whenever you, uh, can you put the green sticky when you find uh, the service complete surveys and you've got this filtering stuff that's actually happening. Um, so we're all starting from the same place. So I've only got three people I'll find that. So you're looking for, if you search for create data set for exporting, uh, You can do Control F or Command F, uh, and it'll start a, a search string. And if you, you can put Create Data Set, or Create Data Set for exporting. Oh, I can't find it. Maybe it's case sensitive. No, no, it's not case sensitive. Create data. What is it next? Okay, so it's not, it's 533, where is it? I'm telling you to find something and I can't even find myself now. Uh, I create their data set. Okay, that's why. Create their data. Okay, that's, so, okay. So I think most of you are there. Katie, are you there? Maria? 
of you guys just giving up the world to love. It's about three people that are not with green stickies. It'd be good to get those three people, Maria, Katie, I remember they're not here. Anyway, so so if, if you do, if you select, so I've taken the comments out, you can either take the comments out manually, or if you select the, the, the space, and if you do Control Shift M, or no, Control Shift C, rather, or Command Shift C, incidentally, it can put the comments back and take them out again using the same command, so it kind of twiddles on. So what this is going to do is going to take your surveys, you're going to remove any species ID, you're going to remove any, any NAs and weights, you're going to remove any NAs and high feet, you're going to remove any, any sex which has not been specified. If you run that by, by typing command or control enter, okay, and then and later on you have a, a second set of instructions just below it, species count, so again, if you select that and if you type Command Shift M or um, sorry, Command Shift C or Control Shift C, I'll remove the commands if you type it again. So this is taking the data and it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's um, filtering it down. So count it, I didn't cover because we didn't have enough time. But you can count the species ID and it's gonna introduce a variable N into your uh, routines. And then you're only going to consider um, species that have more than 50 uh, rows in it. And then you're going to select only the species ID column. And you're going to pipe that into counts, ID, uh, counts, species counts. So again, similarly, if you command shift and run execute that. Okay, and th then the final bit is not there. So if you do... Um, Okay, so so the okay, you know, it's here. So just below that, there's another line. Again, if you command shift or control shift C to remove the commands, um, and then uh, you're only keeping those species which have a count of fifty. Uh, so again, this time you're using the N operator. Um, so you're taking the, the, the species count, so the species ID, which are more than 50, and then you're only keeping those species. So if you, again, if you enter that, uh, and the final thing it doesn't do for you, oh, actually, you'd be okay. You don't need to write it to file, but let's write it to file anyway. So if you wanted to write this to file, you do write. And now it's going to be underscore CSV. So there's a difference. Uh, th this comes from the readr package, um, um, which is a slightly, uses usually tables, it gives you slightly more, more versatility. Um, so we're gonna write service complete, which is the stuff we just created. Ah, I can spell correctly. Okay, service complete. Uh, and you have to specify a path. And we're going to write that to, to data, which is where we're going to put derive data and surveys unders, unders, underscore complete dot CSV. So if we execute that, Okay, so at some point the path is going to disappear, um, and you're going to put the path in the in the file um, and thing directly. Um, but now, if you go, if you if you go into your files uh, and look into data, you should find uh, the service complete data there. Okay, so so this is how you would write your data uh, out into a file. Um, uh, per se, that's not important uh, other than for, for your edification, uh, but rather um, um, what is important is you have the service complete. Um, 
data frame uh, available because we're going to be using that. You can still use the other one, but um, the surveys, but this one's slightly a slightly narrower version of it. Oops. So in the, uh, the other one, you had 34,000 elements. And in this one, you have 30,000. So you've, you've lost about 44,000 uh, rows of it. Okay, so so let's start with um, um, ggplot, okay? So the, the, there's two ways. I mean, so when you, so this, um, the GG stands for, as Robert always likes to point out, stands for the grammar or graphics, uh, which is um, something that was proposed uh, by somebody called um, Le Leland Wilkinson, uh, but Hadley Wickham, which is one of these guys that's been prolific in, in our, in terms of, and he now works for our studio. And if you, if you look him up, I mean, he's, he's, he's done a heck of a lot for our, um, um, he adopted and he implemented the, the, this language of graphics um, to be used within um, within R. And all it's, it's you're basically building up a graphic in layers. So the, the base layer, the, the base layer that you create is 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 you done using ggplot, um, and then you specify data, and we're going to use the, the the data we just created surveys. Complete. Oops, sorry. Complete. There we go. And then if you close off the thing. So if you type enter or command return for this, uh, you'll find that um, your plot now has something in it for the first time ever. Um, and it's just it's just nothing, right? I mean, basically this is the background, this is the base layer that you're gonna be building on uh, for, for your graphics. So I just want to point out one other thing. I mean, so you, you build it by explicitly um, specifying the data um, parameter into ggplot. You can also use, and I prefer this syntax, you can, the surveys, surveys, ah, if I can spell, complete. And then you can also use the piping operator that we just encountered in dplyr and pipe that to ggplot. And at the moment it'll be black, okay. So it gives you exactly the same thing. So it's up to you um, which mechanism you actually use. The, the nice thing is that you met, although you have to assimilate them, all of these different functionalities in, in Deployer, which allows you to start from a data frame to winnow it down, introduce new columns, and then finally pipe it into ggplot. And so you don't have to explicitly specify the data parameter. Okay. So we've got the base layer. Okay. So regardless of whether we use the service complete or the, or the okay, I'm going to use the service complete um, piping operator, but you can use the other one if you want. I just think this is much more elegant. Uh, service complete. I'm going to pipe that to ggplot. Okay, so so we we put a base layer. Um, the next thing we do is we put a mapping, uh, which is basically this is going to operate globally and it's going to tell it what we're going to plot. Um, so this is a, a a mapping that's going to operate for all the other commands. So you do that through something called an aesthetic parameter AES for aesthetic, and then you specify the the aesthetics you're going to use within um, your um, your functionality. So we're gonna have an X variable, uh, which is gonna be um, the, the one at the bottom, and we're gonna put the weight there. Okay. And then we're gonna have a Y, and we're gonna use the, the hind foot length, which is one of the columns. So we're gonna say Y is equal to hind foot length. Okay. So, so if you type return now, Oh, command enter rather. Okay, so now we've added to our um, our base graph. Okay, so although we still don't have any points in in, in the in the graph, we have the the, the axes with um, with um, uh, an extent 
uh, and uh, the bottom one is called weight as expected and the top one is called hand foot length, which is fine. And the final thing is now we start adding the layers. Oops, sorry. Um, um, and the way that you add a layer is to specify one of these things called a, a geometry or a geom. Um, so you add a plus. Now, oops, is that a plus? Yes, it's a plus. So the plus must always be uh, the last, if you have several lines of ggplot, the plus thing must always be the last command or the last sign at the, at the end of it. You can, I don't have to take a new line, so I could put, okay, let's, let's do it in two ways. In geom, I'm gonna say points. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put points, is that what I want? Yeah, point brother. Okay, so I've created the base layer using the ggplot command. I've sped what my stats is going to be. I'm going to use x as the weight and y as the hand foot length. And that, that, that gave me that extent. Now, geom point, what it's, that's going to do is going to plot points across the, uh, on the plot itself. Okay, so I'm, it's running, it's taking a little bit of time. And you've actually seen I have the points now. Um, where am I? Here we are. Um, um, so as I said to you before, if I click on zoom, it's going to take it out of the thing and it's going to be externally. So uh, my, 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 because I'm squishing things because of the size of the font, and then you can enlarge it and you can, I think you can zoom in. Uh, no, you can. Oh, maybe I'm not sure if you can. Uh, can you? It doesn't matter. Uh, but you can look at it in a closer line. So now you have the points. Uh, which is the base thing. Now, what I said to you before is you can take a new line there, a geom point, and put it this way. And again, you get the same plot. What will not work is if you put the, the plus on the next line, okay? This is going to give you an error, just to show you, because sometimes you forget, even sometimes I forget, okay? so so. Okay, the plot was there from last time, but you can see I'm getting a, a, an error. Um, so, so you must put if you're going to take a new line, you must have the plus as a, as a, the continuation. So it's saying, oh, there's more to go, kind of thing. Okay. So, what else can we do? Uh, that's okay. So let's do a little bit more. Um, so we got the spot. Okay. So what, what we're having here is that there's a lot of overplotting. Okay. Um, the um, multiple, the, there's, there's probably a heaviness of plots. So you're plotting po points on top of points and you can't really see that because you're just plotting a point over a point. What can be useful sometimes is it introduce a certain level of transparency. So if you make it slightly transparent, if you have a plot and over a plot, it's gonna get darker. And so the way that you do that, you can specify an alpha parameter. Okay, so we can specify either, we can, do it in two points. We can, if we do it here, it's going to apply globally. So we, let's let's do it here first. Zero point one. Okay. So note this is like with uh, the the mapping parameters. So it's outside the EES. There's a comma and there's an alpha, right? And if you run it, oh, so it's not worked. And then the reason why it's not worked is that. It, 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 you really need to apply it locally. You need to apply it to the points. So let's try. I, I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna work, but I put it in the in geom points. If you run that, okay. Now it's worked. So you can now see that by by making it transparent. So so one will be opaque and and zero is is transparent. So if we make it zero. Is not is no good uh, because um, if you make a bigger, it shows you more detail. Okay, you can even make it um, even more transparent. So let's let's I I think there's a limit zero point zero one. 
And again, this is what playing with stuff uh, can. Okay, so now you can see that there's still quite a lot of overplotting in this region here and this region here. Um, the, this is much fainter. If you compare, if you go back to the previous version, if you can use the arrows here, um, you can see that there was some stuff here before, but, but, but compared to the, if you make it even more transparent, that now is really disappearing and there's lots of points. So the, the thing seems to be congregating with a fruit length of between zero and 50 and um, what, so the weight of zero and 50 and the, the, the hind fruit seems to lie predominantly between uh, 10 and possibly 40. Um, and again, so, so you're beginning to elucidate more information from your data uh, by, by playing with the parameters. Um, you can even introduce uh, more information. So you can put a mapping that applies locally to the points. So the points can also have an AES parameter. So let's put comma. We're gonna have an aesthetic parameter for points. And we're gonna say, we're gonna put, um, what we're we gonna say. Oh no, let, okay, sorry, before putting that in, let me, let me change the color of the points, uh, color. Again, you can use British or American spelling, whatever your favorite is. And this is going to play, apply universally to all the points. So you can find now that the points go boo, as they do indeed. Okay, but it's not giving you any extra information. It's just it's, it's affecting the, the prettiness of your graph. If instead we use an, an AES parameter, an aesthetic parameter, um, you can do a mapping, okay? So we're gonna say, we're gonna use color this time, British spelling, and, and we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna map the species ID to the color. So you, you're gonna now have three bits of information on your graph. You're gonna have the X, Y, and the, the sorry, the X, which is the weight, the Y is the hind foot, and we're now going to have a color to, to, to give information about the species. So if you type a control enter, sorry, I type something else. Control enter, not command, whatever I type. Okay. So again, I really need to zoom into this one because um, uh, I think uh, I can't see it because it's already. Yeah. Uh-huh, okay. So, so the problem now is because I made it so transparent. So I'm gonna change the transparency to be 0 0.1. Otherwise you can't see the, the colors, which is a pain. It was, okay, even then it's a little bit faint, but it's a little bit better than, well, okay. Let, let me just, Make it, oh, let's make it 0 0.4. So the, the overplotting is happening there, but I'll be able to see what this, okay. So now I can actually see the key. There's too many in the key, unfortunately. Oh no, it's about right. I can still see it. Okay, so, so, so now we can get an idea. Uh, um, using the species ID to color in uh, again. So you can see there's a clustering here of one species. The clustering here is happening because of possibly two or three species. Uh, again here, this is another species, but possibly not as many as the other species. And there's this clustering here is happening because of another species. So again, by introducing these mappings, adding colors and everything else, you're beginning to get more information about the, um, your plots. So, actually, let, let's let's do a uh, let's do um, so th this is going about. Let's try this this example here. It, it requires you to install a library, uh, and and then to look at the. The service plot data, so this would be the GG plot. And if you use Gelm hex to, to, to look at the data. Um, so try try this one. I'll give you I'll give you five minutes. So I'll give you a chance to play if I can find that. What's the time in here? 
here it is. So I'll give you five minutes. So I try that and oh yeah, four minutes is fine. So try try doing the um installing the hex bend package and then um loading the library and then just trying trying a different geometry instead of using points uh, use geom hex oh but the okay fine it pgg plot here i mean the the, the okay you can also I can't, i'll cover this but don't forget that service plot just use ggplot uh, with the usual aesthetics uh, and then use GG on hex as opposed to using GG on points. And then I, I'll bring the graph back up. Where's the graph? On oh, the time rather. I think I've already installed GG on hex. Oh, right, the GG of what it was called. Alex, right, so I'm over running again. I know. I'm I'm happy to finish at five if people are willing to go that far. Uh, uh, but if you don't want that, let's then... ask them. Um, okay. People might have to have some some other duties. Well, I mean, if you have to go, you have to go. But I mean, I, I mean, if you have to go, then we I guess we want them to fill to fill in the survey. The, the, the questionnaires, right, and provide some feedback. Yeah. So let's see after the exercise. I'll okay. share the link to the survey okay. with those who have to leave. Okay, so we have Heather who says it's fine to finish at five. Yeah. Thanks very much. Well, is there, I mean, it's on you guys as well. I mean, although I guess that there's no necessity for you all of you to stay. I'm happy to continue. No, it's fine. I, I can stay. Um, Mario, so um, at the top of Etherpad, there is a link for the Post workshop questionnaire online 18. Um, so I'm I might sure just that. have to step step out for a for a minute or two, but if you ask everyone who needs to leave now to fill it in before they go. Oh, so so like don't now. let anyone go before they fill it in. <laughs> I can't do that. How can I stop them? <laughs> so so line 18, you said. Alex? Sorry. You said line yeah. 18. 18, yeah. Okay. There is a, a link and there is a name. It says post workshop survey. Uh, so I'm not even on 18. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, so, so let's take a. Um, let's take a mini, a, a mini break in the sense that. If, what I'm proposing is I, I, I will happily continue until five or even half five. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Um, 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 and then I can take things a little bit more leisurely than if I try and rush everything. Um, and then people can ask questions. Uh, if you have to leave, um, then, then you just have to leave. Um, but as, as Alex said, if you can 
uh, go to the etherpad um, and if you could fill in the post workshop survey which is at the top of the etherpad before leaving uh, otherwise you said i'll do it afterwards and then it never happens uh, and also at the bottom did you is it there no uh, if you could put in some feedback again um there is nothing at the bottom. We, we, we can just ask people to fill in the official Carpentries um, okay, fine. survey. So just to keep it simple, um, just want to thank those who have to leave now for, for attending. And yes, as Mario said, it's been a steep learning curve. You, the beginning always is a bit slower because you have to familiarize yourself, not only with R, but with R Studio and all the different windows. So there is loads of other learning that that takes place before you can even start to to learn the, the actual programming language but hopefully you are now all set up for further learning either revisit our um, lessons or find some other tutorial online on our oh, no, no i mean so so to walk over the notes so all, all the stuff we've covered almost um almost 100 percent and there's yeah, one or yeah, two sure things enough. i've covered um i've gone uh, off topic and um, um, have a look at those notes. I, I supplied you with my email address at the beginning. Uh, so I'm, I'm perfectly happy for you to email me. The only thing I would suggest is uh, make it clear the subject line uh, that uh, this is from the NBEC uh, data capital course. Otherwise I will delete you because I think you're spamming me. Um, um, no, but the important thing is that you're set up now to work, continue working in our studio and you've got well you attended the data carpentry but if you want to revisit the lesson or if you want to take this further yeah feel free yeah. to so how long does the questionnaire take roughly i mean how long five minutes the questionnaire minutes? no less than five minutes i think it's just a minute or two so let's say let's say five minutes okay so well if everybody can fill in the questionnaire just now i will continue after that um uh, for as long as it well actually up until I, I run out of people. Um, 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 yeah, we need a deadline. Five o'clock. Yeah, I mean, uh, five, so take five minutes just now to fill in that questionnaire, and then we'll come back to it. And if you have to leave, uh, just just leave quietly. <laughs> Thanks, uh, everyone. Uh, but I'm, I'm quite happy to continue. I'm sorry that um, it's been a, a bit of a steep learning curve for those people that don't program. Um, I've always been aware of this, and um, but if you if you take five minutes just just to fill in that questionnaire because I, it's, it's important for the carpentry. Is it important for the carpentry or for us? I'm not sure. Uh, and then I will do the well, once that's done. Uh, I'll do the I'll go with the exercise and I continue on GG plot. And if you have to leave. Um, like, like Alex said, um, if you do the follow the notes for, as a first instance, uh, the videos will be available at some point. I don't know if they really add that much value. Um, uh, and I'm perfectly willing to answer questions if you send me emails. The only thing I ask is make it clear at the top. I think I think for me I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at the videos again and again until yep. I just That's fine. Uh, learn it and and thank you again for today I'm just filling in a question yep. I would have to leave now um, but yep. then uh, thanks for the time for today read that read the course notes the course notes are very good and they, they'll give you slightly more rounder uh, thing and like I said at the very beginning I mean it's a case of playing with stuff I mean you play break it try and fix it. And then play with your own data. That's that's a more of a motivator. Um, so I will continue until five, and then we can take another look as to people have really had enough.
Okay, hopefully most of you have completed the surveys. Um, like I said, if you have to leave, just, just leave. Um, I'll continue until five um, and see how far of this we can, we can do. Um, okay. So, so, so the, 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 um, the exercise here, I mean, the reason why it's called the service plot is that you can assign, um, instead of having to type ggplot in all of that every time, you could, for instance, create gg, um, doom, and then put this bit here, which is going to be there all the time, and assign it to that. Um, So the next time you, oh gosh, what did I do wrong? Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Hold on, let me try one thing. And then if I do GG plus, kiln point. Oh, sorry, I'll go. go. So I, I know what I did wrong. I, f I forgot. Okay, we're going to do that. I need to add this as well. Okay, so, so oh, you can put it inside the, the ggplot, you can put data as well. So that's going to work now. And now instead of having, when, you, when you're playing with the different geometries and instead of having to type the, this, this long string, I can just type gg plus that and I get the plot, okay? So basically after I've taken the GG and assigned the, the, the first bit of the graph, and then I just I just put GG in and instead of having to type in. So going back to the exercise, so it suggests um, installing packages. Well, I've already, I think I've already got it. So I can do libra oh, library, uh, hexpen. So, okay, so it's not complaining, so I'm fine. And then I can do um, gg plus geom hex. Okay, so, so you're using this kind of um, hex geometry. And, and again, you can, be, can begin to play in the same way as before. You can put an alpha parameter in here. Alpha equals 0 0.1. Oh, gosh. That's made a fairly major impact. Not so good. Maybe, maybe that's too low. 0 0.4. That's 0 0.5. So that's kind of showing some kind of contouring effect, but you've already got a count here. So maybe this is not needed at all. Let's try the other thing that we tried before, AES color. I don't know how well this will work, equals species ID. Ah. Not so good. Um, I mean, again, oh gosh, sorry. Zoom. And this, that word it says. It's using the, um, the color as, as the outline. I think you can also have a fill. Let's, let me try it. So I'm just playing. So again, um, oh, let's see what that gives you. Okay, that's, that's the fill. Uh, Let's put a color black so you can see the hexes. I'm putting that outside there. Nah. So again, I mean, you, you can play with the, the different parameters and, and get something that you think looks good. I don't know if that looks better than before. 
you're still getting a lot of overplotting, so the overplotting is not kind of working. Um, but anyway, instead of using prices, having these hexes, um, hexagonal uh, shapes. So, so let's move on a little bit. Um, I need to find the right, so I've got a script I'm playing with. Okay, so we've had the colors and everything else. Um, and that. Okay, so, so we, we can play with other geometries. So let, let's do another plot. Uh, I'm going to use service complete. I'm going to use my syntax as opposed to the the one that's specified in the in the in the in the what do I call it in the in the notes. So you're going to pipe service complete. I'm going to pipe that as a command shift M or control shift M, and I'm going to pipe pipe that to ggplot, um, and I'm going to specify um, where am I? I'm going to, okay, um, I'm going to put an AES and I set a parameter. This I'm going to use X, it's going to be the species ID. Species ID. And I'm going to put the weight on the Y axis. Okay. And instead of using, so we looked at two geometries. We looked at um, we looked at the the the, the points, geom points, and we looked at geom hexes. Let's let's try box plot. So there's something called geom. box plot and see what that gives us. Okay. So now you have the different species ID and then you have a box plot. A box plot um so what um the the the, the little box here the, the dark line in the middle of the box is the median um the the, the, the top of the box will be the third quartile uh, and the, the is this right and this will be the, th the first quartile and then yeah that'll be the second quarter which is the same as the median and um, then then you've got the whiskers which I think indicate the range of uh, and if it's over a given range you've got dots which are the outliers so you've got the, the weight for each of the species at the bottom here and you've got a, a box signifying the, the, the box plot and then some of the outliers, which are over a given distance from the thing. So here's, the, I think that's the first first quartile, uh, the fourth quartile at the, at the top of the whiskers, uh, second, no, hold on, that's first quartile, second quartile, third quartile. I need to go look up what a box plot is exactly, but that's definitely the median, that's definitely the first quartile, and that's definitely the third quartile. And that's just the extent of the data plus some outliers, uh, which are, I think 1.5 times the something distance from the, from the median or something. Um, if you want to know what kind of uh, geometries you can play with, I mean, if you do dash to search, you can do geom underscore, uh, and then make sure that it doesn't pick one, a particular geometry. Uh, and then it will give you, so these are the you got an a and a by blank box plot. You got you got contour. You got count. You got density. So these are these are the ones that are available to you. You can play with. And you can have a look at later on um, to play with. And you can actually search for Google. You can for ggplot um, examples, and it will provide you with uh, more stuff to play with. Oh yeah, okay. So so the, so, let's copy this and paste it so that we don't have to keep on typing the same bit all the time. We're, we're going to add another point. Um, um, we're going to add an alpha to the, the geom plot, so it, it's kind of faint. Alpha. Let, let, let's not make it make it zero point one. 
and then we're going to add points on top of there, there that. So basically, you've got you got this is all layers, okay? So DG plot here is the first layer, the base layer. Then if you add something, you're going to add another layer. So this is going to sit on top of the 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 the, the, the GG plot layer. If we add another geometry, that's going to sit on top of the other one. So if you find that this will overwrite um, stuff that's below it. Um, so that's useful to know. So if you change the order, then uh, um, then the 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 the, the geometry be on top would might obscure bits of the geometry below, which is, is good to know. We're gonna add a jitter, so we're gonna we're gonna shake the points a little bit so they're not they're not over plotting on top of each other. And again, we're gonna add um, the alpha. So this is gonna plot the points, but it's gonna shake them a little bit so they're not so they're not all on top of each other. Uh, and we're gonna oh gosh. Going to add a color to it as well. Color, so all the points are going to be of the same color. Oh, that's American speak. Color equals tomato, which is a kind of red. Okay, so, so let's see what this gives us. Tomato. Okay, maybe it doesn't do colors. Tomato without the. Interesting. So as you can see, the points are more or less overwritten there. The underlying box plot. But the box plot is there. Oh, sorry. So let me add, let me make the box plot zero. Um, zero is a is zero sounds pattern opaque. No, it's it. Let's see, let's see what this gives me. Sorry, the, the... Oh, that makes it worse. Okay, so you can actually see that the box plot is slightly obscured by all the points, uh, but you can still see it. But it's giving you an indication of where all the points are actually lying. Um, in terms of the distribution of the weight for the given species. Um, maybe to make them a little bit less heavy. And again, this is just, well, oh, that's not so great. Anyway, I mean, you can play with the parameters until um, um, you get something that satisfies. So how much time have we got left? Okay, let's let's look at a final set of point, um, things before. We're not going to be able to cover things like facets, um, which are really cool. Um, so we could we could create some new data, um, taking the service complete data. And we're going to pipe that to um, count. So this is something we didn't look at last time, but we're going to count elements by, by two things. We're going to count them by year and by the genus. And we're going to save that into something called yearly count. Oh, the other way around, sorry. I'm always going to do it that way. Uh, this is my kind of preferred notation, but again, you may not wish to use this. Yearly counts. Okay, so we're okay. So let's run that. Uh, what does it give? Let's just make sure you can you can see what's in there. Yearly counts. So we have the year, the species, and how many of them there were in that year. So the counting here is 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 actually so so it's doing a kind of group by year uh, and genus, and then and then um, counting the number of elements. So that's what that's coming you with. So now we can take the yearly counts. And pipe that to, oh, sorry, control F, I'm doing the whole thing. To find that to ggplot. 
we're going to take aesthetics to be X. It's going to be the, the year. Uh, and Y is going to be the number equals N. And this time we're going to use a, a line geometry. So we're going to put plus. You don't have to align it. It can be, that's just me being, you know. Uh, okay, so if you, if you plot this, it's not great. Um, so what we really want to see is we want to see it per, per genus. So again, um, let me copy this and paste that again because I'm going to make one modification. And we're going to group this time. I think we need to group. I think it's group. Yep. Group equals genus. So I've, I've only added um, one extra aesthetic. So instead of actually having it for every um, Genus. I'm going to separate them into into different genuses. Okay, so so it looks better now. I can see the differences, but I can tell what I can't tell what genus is what. So we're going to do one additional modification. Um, 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 I think it's one more. Now. Instead of having, um, we're going to change again. I'm going to copy paste because I'm going to make one change. And I don't want to type the whole thing. I'm going to put color here instead. Oh, what am I done wrong? What does it mean? Okay. Unexpected and nearly cat. Uh, yeah, we can say, yeah, y is equal to n. Oh, sorry. Okay, that, that's a problem. Sorry. Color. Okay, so, so it's, it's operating the same function as, as group by. Um, it's, the plot is very square, so I need to zoom into it. Of that one. There we go. Okay, so so now you can actually see the the, the different species. You can to distinguish them, <laughs> unless you're colored by and you have a problem. Um, um, and you can actually see that the point. I mean, I'm so now I'm going to ref. Uh, I'm going to add. I want to see the plus geom point. So I'm adding another layer. Okay, so it's actually showing you where the things. So you can see by, you can add layers on top of layers. Um, and let me show you one thing. So if you, if you make the point, no, I don't want to, no, I don't. Uh, okay, just to show, I'm, I'm going to make all the points blue. Which is not great because it's overwriting it, but I, I, I want to illustrate another point. Um, if I show you the, if I zoom it in again, I don't know if I show you the plot, that one. Okay, so, so the, these are the points on top of the lines. And if I change the order, and if I put the, the lines after the points, if you look carefully, you won't be able to see on that squish plot. You'll now see that the lines are on top of the points as opposed to 
it's, it's, you won't be able to see it from my plot, but hopefully if, you, if you've done the same thing, you'll be able to see that by changing the order, the lines are being plotted on top of the points, or previously the points were on top of the lines. So the order in which you, you specify the layering is impacting on the way the graph actually looks. And you can use that to your advantage or, 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 or disadvantage. Okay, so, so now it begins to get a bit more complicated. I'll just show you, um, I'll, I'll, I'll paste in some code just to show you, as opposed to getting you to do it. I mean, I, that's, because I, I think, yeah, well, so this will be my last block, but uh, but there's something else you can actually do. You can you can facet the, the variables. So instead of actually happening, so here, here you've got ggplot, Okay, the data is explicitly being mentioned inside the ggplot parameter. You've got the aesthetic parameter when you say X is gonna be the year and Y is gonna be the numbers. You're gonna use a line geometry um, um, and then you're gonna do a facet wrap. And, uh, you'll see in a minute what a facet wrap looks like. Now, the new thing is that you need to specify, you need to, uh, whenever you're doing a facet, if you're specifying a column, you need to surround it by bars, which kind of quotes it. So this is new to me, but, but um, um, it's just providing a way to actually say, this is the column I want to use, but if you put genus by itself, it's not gonna work. Just to show you what it looks like. Okay, so now you've got multiple um, graphs. Instead of having all the lines in one graph, you can, you've got the, the, the lines in separate graphs. Uh, and I guess the axes are, are all to the same scale. So you can actually compare them to each other. All right, and so I've not really, what I would suggest is, is to have a break and then and then at some level um, read through the notes and, and, and try all the, the examples there. And all the examples are basically, apart from one or two variations on the theme, are taken from the notes. Um, and give that a go. I, I think ggplot is really worth your effort to learn. Uh, uh, combine ggplot with deployer, which is the stuff with all the pipes going in and out, uh, is an incredibly powerful way of actually manipulating and looking at your data. And I think, I'm sorry, that's all we've got time for. Um, I hope you've learned something. I hope you have, you'll go away from this being afraid of our, but regarding think, okay, I didn't quite understand everything he said, but some of that looks cool. I want to know more. And if you just play with that. And again, if you run into real difficulties, I mean, uh, if you just email me. Uh, That's because of your accent, Mario. Well, yeah, the Scottish accent or that? Yeah. <laughs> they say that the Scottish Not because accent, they didn't understand R. Oh, yeah, well, okay. So I made things more difficult. But they say that the, the Scottish accent is, is possibly the, the most trustworthy accent in the world. In surveys, and I'm not saying that because I, I'm not a scholar, by the way. I mean, so I, I do say that English is my second language. Uh, I, I speak Spanish, but my, if, you, if you're a Spanish speaker and you hear me speak, you think I speak like a, I've learned Spanish as opposed to it being my native language. All my vocalization is very much English. Um, anyway, I digress. So I, I hope you have enjoyed things of sorts. Uh, uh, the few remaining people that have stuck to the end. It's like sitting at a party and you're like, two o'clock, yeah. yeah. The hardcore. Yeah, the hardcore. Anyway, yeah. Do you want to say some words, uh, Alex? Oh, you filled in the, the post-survey questionnaire, hopefully already. And um, I, I have. Do I have to fill it? No, just the participants. And um, just let, we can just let everyone go. Thanks very much for um, attending and for and, being such yeah. a great bunch. And I hope you've learned something over two days. I mean, um, not only today, but yesterday with spreadsheets. And Open Define is really powerful. Again, something worth knowing, possibly less of a steep learning curve than R is, uh, but R is gonna give you all these wonderful graphics if you're prepared to put some time in.